Well, I know a lot of people are asking us about the Gypsy and Ryan breakup. Obviously, very sad to see them separate, and we had the pleasure of interviewing them both. We will get to that and more at the end of the episode. As well as uh, later this episode, Elizabeth Wagmeister from CNN will be calling in to give us the 411 on all things Sean Diddy Pity Diddy Combs. I don't know what name he's going by these days, but he is dealing with a lot of of allegations and accusations. Uh, There's so much conjecture and information on the internet. We want to make sure we get this story right. So we brought in the big guns, the actual professional and actual journalist, Elizabeth Wagmeister from CNN, is going to call in to give us the tea on what's going on in that case later this episode. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Vile Files Reality Recap Edition. I am your host, Nick. Join by the household, we got Ali in Minnesota. Uh, Leia is at the desk. We have Sierra. And back on the show, reality recap, crushing life as a new mom. She's been on Going Deeper, but she is back on reality recap. The one and only, my fiance, Natalie Joy. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Did you miss me? Because I missed you. Oh, I missed you, babe. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like our audience missed. Was that to the audience? It was, oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I'll shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. And our special guest today, I'm so excited to have her on, friend of mine. And first time on the show? First time on the first show. First time on the show, the one and only Tallulah Willis. Yay! So happy to be here. So happy to have you. How have you been? The last time I saw you was eight years ago. In oh person? In person was, was eight that, years was ago. Was that at uh, The Masked Singer? It was, at, oh, or yeah, it was at The Masked Singer. With uh, when Rumor was? Rumor was the lion. And we couldn't post any photos no, about it because, yeah. you know, so they had to make you wear these like face masks. You remember that? Has it been eight years since I've seen Is you in person? Eight? That's Jesus well, Christ. she has a baby. You yeah. guys have a baby. Yeah. I want a baby at some point. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Wait, the audience members have to wear masks? No. So if you were like a uh, like behind season the scenes. One. Season one. So it was like they were so scared of anyone taking like drone photos. So if you were a guest of the person on it, you had to wear these like almost like. um Because it's like whose friend would show up. Esque and... like masks. Yeah. Oh, and at wow. that time, like Rumor and I were. You were just both like single as fuck, like hanging out, oh, yeah. being like, she's my friend and I'm her friend. Those and we just dogs. like, yeah. And uh, so, like, people saw us out together. So, like, you know, they had to, you know, obviously Tallulah sister, you know, oh, they want to yeah. give that away. Come on. Did you she, know? how did she do it? Can she sing? She can sing. Oh, like, rumor? Oh my God. She's triple yeah. threat. She oh won Dancing with the Stars, by oh. the way. She won. It's a great one to rewatch this season. Um, She's an amazing singer. R- amazing. I I also, no I mean, your whole family is very talented. The family is talented. We are a creative bunch. Yeah, if you go sing karaoke with the Willises, <laughs> it's really fucking annoying. It's like, oh have my Have you done that? God, I have. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> no, it is outrageous. Did it's... you sing karaoke? No. You yeah. won't even sing to our daughter, so no. I would be shocked. Well, you know, I, I sing. I, I sing. You go, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Did you guys ever watch Zubilee Zoo as a kid? Am no, I, am no, I, that is. Am I aging myself? Never heard of. If you're out there and you're listening, and if you know what Zubilee Zoo is, they're probably dead. <laughs> the actors? Probably. No, the people who watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Sorry. <laughs> Woo. Woo. Anyways. Uh. Anyways, what were we talking about? Zubilee Zoo. Yeah. Your sister. My sister. Can you yeah. sing too? I I can't. I can't. One okay. time. I was like eight Scout years old. Can. Scout, my sister, Scout, both my sisters. Scout sister. saying, yeah, Scout, like, they were at uh, karaoke. I knew Rumor could sing. <laughs> and then Scout comes on and arguably better than Rumor. Oh Ar- my argu- God. I mean, they're just both like, they're, they're both, they're in they're their both own... stunning. Like I was just like jaw on the floor. So they're both wow. like, knockouts singing yeah. i have other talent of course which i'm okay with and she's I'm, an artist i'm an artist but i was 11 years old and i was at a party with my mom and someone mentioned oh I, your girl sing and she was like well rumor is amazing classically scout sings really beautifully Tulula cannot um and then, <laughs> then we just kept going and i was like oh i i guess i, I can't okay <laughs> Thank you, mom. Thank you. Like, it just, like, totally painted the next, like, 20 yeah. years of my life. <laughs> like, cannot. <laughs> cannot. Like, it just was so flowed. I was like, she just can't, but it's okay. It's okay. She's got other talent. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're, like, about to raise your hand to sing your favorite yeah. song. <laughs> no, never, never, never mind. Ooh, okay. Ooh. Uh, what else is new? Anything? What else is new? I am working on a really cool project. Ooh. I'm writing a book right now, <gasps> actually. Can you share more? I can share more, a little bit more. Um, It's going to be a series of short stories, essays of my life, because I didn't want to do like a whole 
start from birth to now memoir, but I have so many crazy stories just like locked up in here. And I was like, I need to get them out on the page because they're so like you wouldn't believe that these are real. I don't even believe they're real and I live them. Um, So just like shenanigans. But the real that. kind of shenanigans. Oh, I mean, your not family. The, not the bad podcast kind of shenanigans. Not the bad podcast. <gasps> <gasps> oh, damn. Shame. Damn. Shame. 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 Uh, is your experience meeting Tom Swartz going to be in your memoirs? Oh, my God. The little golden retriever puppy. That's yes. what I called him. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, uh, Tallulah was on Mission to Mars. Stars, Stars on, on Mars. Mars. Stars on Mars. Mission yeah. to Mars. <laughs> Close potato, enough. potato. Potato, potato. Uh, on Fox. Mm-hmm. Uh it, it it preceded uh, special forces on Fox, right? Yeah. I I didn't know they were doing them at the same time, so I was like, oh, we're totally like breaking the glass ceiling right now, like we're doing something really cool. Was and it then, cool? You know what? It it was again a weird situation. I found myself in the outskirts of Australia, and the day before we went into the main hab or whatever, they were like, you know, there's a cave if you want to go. There's a cave. If you want to check it out. And I was like, yeah, it's like an opal mining tiny town in rural Australia. Next thing I know, I think we're going to just be seeing like fossils and stuff. I'm on like a a bucket and a rope and a guy who like is a deep Australian man. Um, and he kept saying dynamite. And I was like, OK. And I, I <laughs> pressed one of those like big mechanical buttons and lowered me down into a mine shaft. shaft yeah. Okay. And I have really bad claustrophobia. And I was kind of like, okay, we have a choice right now. We can lose our fucking minds and freak out or just know that there's going to be an end to this and be present with it. So that was like one of the craziest shenanigans of my life, being in the tiny cave. And then immediately following that, met the Tom Schwartz, met all of my friends on there. And- Did that like, moment teach you anything? Did that moment teach me anything? Because it- I, I mean, <laughs> no, seriously, like, because like sometimes fear can be a choice. Honestly, yes, because I felt like I knew that I was going to be safe. All parameters right? Yeah. could clearly go, you're going to be safe. I, it was it was a choice to either go, am I going to miss out on this opportunity? Because I'm like very stressed about the idea of getting stuck or down below. Um, and it was like, I'm so glad I did it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, you describing that moment was it was very much, that was a big part of Special Forces. I mean, some of yeah. it was just the pain and suffering of being mm-hmm. tortured. That just sucked. But you guys had it, I think, very different. Because it was like, to speak put your like body mind and soul to yeah. the test we were just that, like eating can- like gummy worms sure. <laughs> like, that, that part was different but there was a lot of like the fear stuff of yeah uh, and understanding the difference between uh danger and fear okay we knew we were safe but it was all very scary, scary. shit. yeah and, like being able to like turn your brain off and, and try to that. experience the crazy the crazy experience which like that was a very like Rewarding moment to learn how to do that. But my question is, when you mentally get over it, how and but you're physically overexerted, like you're physically at your max and you still have to keep going. That's what I don't. Yeah, that's a lot. I that my 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 experience in athletics and track and field probably helped. But yes, okay. it was like brutal. It was it was. Yeah. Running on a, on fumes. <sighs> Yeah, Kudos. but Tom Schwartz. Tom Schwartz, Golden Retriever. Um, Golden Retriever. So I knew I was doing. I I knew this was doing the show. It like all came up really fast. They were like, "You're gonna leave in two weeks." I get on the first flight from LAX to uh, Sydney, and as I'm landing, they have like you know the handlers like taking you to and fro, and I see Tom Schwartz, and I'm like, literally, this is peak Scandaval, and I'm following peripherally because I'm like, I don't know exactly what led up to this, but clearly some crazy fucking shit's going down. Like this is some some waves being made. And I was like, oh, he's here. Like that makes, you know, that makes sense. There was a little bit of like a like a brokenness in him, I would say. Like mm. and I I being this like Aquarius empath being like, I know you're going through something really weird right now. <laughs> we were at like a holding chamber airport, like drinking uh, Diet Coke and chips. And I was like, hey, man, how you doing? You OK? 
<laughs> doing all right? He was like, well, yeah, I don't know. And then he's like running his hands through his hair. <laughs> like, ah, but it's okay. Ah. <laughs> that is him. That's so good. That's good. <laughs> she doesn't sing, but she does impressions. Uh, you know what? Yeah. Boom, there yeah. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Turn her on. But it was overall enjoyable experience with him. Because he is. He's a very li- he, he's he's a very likable person. Very likable person. My hope we had actually these frequent, like kind of more in-depth conversations. And my intention was always to like empower him in like saying, you know, you don't need to let and I I know very little at this point, but like you don't have to let life pummel you. You don't have to let life put you down. Life can't make decisions for you. You have to be the one in the driver's seat. That's how I try to live my yeah. life. Um, because it's really easy to be the victim of your own shit and be like, that's just all happening to me. And like, oh, it's, I don't know how I'm getting in these situations. And, you know, you stay in that loop of like things being really messy and chaotic. And ultimately, like you're co-creating like an environment of not getting what you want and also staying in like pure chaos. Damn. Just think about that for a second. Yeah. Let's just give a moment of silence for Tulum. Yeah, this is just a reality recap. I didn't think we were going to get some knowledge dropped on us. Some going deeper. (laughs) (laughs) Damn. I think I'd rather talk about how you uh, like to point out that River's head smells like my B.O. Oh. (laughs) Well. Well. Listen, I love you. Yeah. And I have some things about me, obviously. Listen, it's fucked up because now you have now he's <laughs> no. been open about like no, 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 no. you like... go through so much like not even like let's just put the nine months of pregnancy aside mm-hmm. and then let's put the twenty four hours of delivery also aside and then you get home and you know you um, have this rapid decrease of hormones you are wearing a diaper mm-hmm. you can barely walk mm-hmm. you have a hole in your body the size of a dinner plate that's mm-hmm. trying to heal mm-hmm. you need sleep but. It's one thing you can't get. Mm -hmm. Your milk starts to come in and your boobs are like lumpy and hard and hot. And you're like, I don't know what's happening. Am I dying? Mm. And then it's also like, no, we're going to throw in a little postpartum BO. Mm. Like, let's give it to the girl who has excessive sweat glands. But I love you more. (laughs) You know, like I'm already struggling enough. But every once in a while when Natalie's snuggling with our cute little baby Mm -hmm. River uh, and then she'll hand her off to me and then I'll go and kiss River's head. You're like, River gets tucked up underneath the right. armpit. <laughs> so the top of her head, there's a little bit, this is like, why is my baby smell like you? <laughs> like, what happened to that like gorgeous new baby smell? <laughs> I'm tainting her. And I'm no. like, oh my God. I'm like, <laughs> Take her away. That's so okay. Right. But wait, is there a specific like new smell that comes after? Or is it just like uh, intensified? Just, um, I, so I, didn't realize that this was a thing until I posted on my story and was like, you know, haven't showered. House is a mess. I'm rocking my baby. I don't care. Like, this is all I care about right now. And also, like, I smell so bad. And everyone was DMing me being like, no, the postpartum BO is so real and it's so bad. And like, it's not just you, but like, there's not like even right out of the shower. You're like, oh, my God, I didn't get it away. No so one I don't talks know. about that. No one talks, no about, one that. talks about that. And like I, let, I, they couldn't just let me skip that part. I'm already <laughs> struggling enough, you know? So, if there's one thing about me, like I'm not getting the the compliment of, oh my God, she smells so, she smells so good. You or our daughter? Both, apparently. Our, our daughter smells great. <laughs> Every once in a while, the top of her head, there's a little stink. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. But it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. It's also April Fool's today. And mm-hmm. we woke up very excited about some news that was breaking. Uh, first, I was driving into the office with reports that Lisa Vanderpump was back on Beverly Hills Housewives. Were you on your phone while you were driving? No, 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 no. You got like a no. pigeon? I was on the phone with Allie prepping. Oh, okay. And she was like... Lisa Vanderpump's back on Beverly Hills. I'm like, is she? Oh my gosh. She's like, do you want to talk about it? I'm like, that's major news. I believe and- he said, that's iconic. <laughs> <laughs> that is. That, 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 would is be. that would be. It iconic. would be iconic. And then we caught into the studio and we were going through like our run of show. What are we going to get into? And then Becca Martinez, formerly of Bachelor Nation, announced that her and her partner and father of her two or three children. Three. Uh, is uh, on season two of Couple to Thruple, and they posted a very, you know, what, what was the what was the post? Well, cats out of the bag with monkey over eyes emoji streaming this summer on at Peacock hashtag Peacock hashtag Couple to Thruple, and then a whole like, um, and it ends with excited of the journey, very believable post, yep. and then I was like, wait, 
this is this is this is must be April Fools. False. Um, when does April Fools end? Is it? Do they do it like an hour later? Is it at midnight? Like when is do it they? Tomorrow? When does Becca announce that, that it's, it's just a joke? Like you rescind your joke? That's yeah. really just a lie. I mean, <laughs> literally, like you just lied to us. Actually, just liars. It's, it's got two thousand six hundred <laughs> comments. Uh, maybe like, is there a point where Becca and her partner are like, should we go on? Like, yeah, like, like, Wait a second. I mean, they did a whole video. But do you think... Well, it's not... They just... Not them. But there's a whole video. Oh, my God. But here's oh God, the thing. What if it was actually they, they like... They put in the work to this. Amazing marketing, and they are on it, and then they're like double backing, I like a it. like a switcheroo. Oh, do you yeah. know what I mean? So people are talking about it. Wait, yeah. did... Um, I feel like this could be real. Did Princess Kate do the graphic designing for this? <laughs> Is it bad? No, it's pretty good. That's oh. the thing, you know? They clearly hired a graphic designer or something, because I think Kate maybe put in the work here no i don't know she didn't do very good on her own post so anyways any other false news r- what should stories? we should we announce something i kind of feel like we should oh my god no i don't i'm not a big april fool's guy you know it's, it's, boy, li- it's lying it's, boy it's who cried lying <laughs> it's a lot of work yeah <laughs> you all are sinning <laughs> has the royal family put on any like april fool's jokes oh that's, every day is april if... fool's for them uh, I don't, she's I don't, just tweeting are, i don't think they're jokey people you don't think so? You don't think they have a sense of humor? No, not at all, do y'all? Does I anyone? thought them saying Kate was, you know, taking up graphic design classes was pretty hilarious. I think they genuinely <laughs> thought they were, that was like, no, we're being for real. Yeah, this yeah. is serious. They'll, they'll funny. believe this. Yeah. yeah. She likes hobbies. <laughs> Kate's always just like, why can't I have a hobby? <laughs> like, five, we'll give her one. <laughs> That's terrible. Uh, anyways. Becca Martinez and Couple with Ruppel would have been. It, what, it, we what don't is, know if it, it's it's not confirmed an April Fool's joke. It is we not don't know for sure. You just can't trust anything posted today. Yeah, right. Yeah, what a weird day to reveal stuff. Also, we... that video that video was done well, but it like I think she would have posted an actual like clip of it, not like just her on the beach. Well, what about Peacock's Instagram? Are they posting anything about the new season of Couple yeah, look, at us, look at Becca Martinez making okay. us put in the work. <laughs> Sorry, you know what? There. Honestly, April Fool's is a good day to kind of like test run an announcement. That's what I'm saying. Ooh. You know, it's like, yeah. hey. You can do it and then you can go, ah, Whoa, just, April just Fool's. No, that would be fucking crazy. <laughs> be crazy. We would we never that. think of that. Everyone like hates it. You're like, yeah, same. <laughs> that was disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> Nick and I did go look at, um, uh, a house or we like on Sundays our little hobby is like open houses we like to go Amazing. just walk through them we're doing some light house shopping we very not... light Nick changes our timeline constantly no. so no, I have no, no idea what to do Nally <laughs> shops for houses like a pair of fucking jeans yeah. <laughs> you know and she's well, like we should buy this one today I'm like okay like there's like a feralness though when you find a house that you're like because I'm a redfin like whore oh, like I'm just on mm-hmm. it and I'm just like scrolling and then I create and like <laughs> like just inject this like fantasy life for mm-hmm. myself where Same. I'm like when I'm there everything's fine a hundred percent I'm already okay. like figuring out where I'm gonna like put my like dishes yes and I'm, I'm yeah. setting it up no it's fun and I like doing it but also at the price point in which we are looking we should shop around I mean, you should make look at sure some yeah. and make sure we like it and look at our options. Look at what we don't like. Look at what we do like. Also, in anyway. person is so much and so important versus the photos. Oh, yeah. Like to really get a even just like energy vibe of the area <laughs> and the like, street that it's on. Yeah. And we're not the most exciting couple. Like we have our each other, our baby river. And like so looking at houses is kind of a fun little hobby to do on the weekends. I love it. Anyway, so we go to this house and there's like really nobody there. It seems like kind of empty. There's like obviously the one real estate agent who is a man. I, I feel like I know you're going with this, but I want you to set it up a little bit. Most of the houses that we are looking at have, you know, it's a thing in LA where they have these like little, like they have an extra room and they turn it into like a movie theater room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. all you wanted to add? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yes, there are movie theater rooms. Okay. And everyone... <laughs> Doesn't is not trying to add more. (laughs) And they have (laughs) these crazy couches in them that you sit in. I have a good point to this, I swear. (laughs) And then I found five (laughs) dollars. Um, no, but they're never playing a movie in the movie theater. No, no, they never are playing, they never are. But we go into this one. Mm And there's the real estate agent who is a man. It is important to state that he is a man and that there's no one else really in the house. Okay. No. We go and in. I walk into the movie theater room and I my first thought 
as a man who likes electronics, is like, you know what? Finally, they're showcasing the movie theater room. Oh my it's God. the movies. A movie is playing. And he's watching Fifty Shades of Grey. No. Oh, my God. I'm like, first of all, gross. Second of all, it's fucking Easter. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is God's day. And you're just like in here, like jacking off alone. Like, oh what's going God. on? It, the sun's still out? It's a soft. Literally, it's the a sun soft, was out. It's a soft porn. I don't think uh, soft. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's mid porn. Mid porn. Mid, mid level porn. And but we like, walk in on like a shower scene. And I was like, ooh. oh, my God. Like. <laughs> Jesus. We, we, we were with child. Fuck out of here. Yeah, it was a little alarming. Do you we, think that he like scrolled through and was like, this one seems good for today? Or he literally went in going, it's Fifty Shades Day today. I honestly think he was like there. Like it was a slow open house. Mm -hmm. No one's really coming. So he's like, I'm just going to sit here and Maybe watch he needs movie. to come. Yeah. Maybe he needs to come. So he's like, I'm just going to put like, on. All those guys who got caught jerking off during the pandemic over Zooms when they thought their screen was on lock. <gasps> it was Excuse like probably me? one of those. You didn't hear about all that? No. There was, a guy, there was like a fucking CNN reporter guy who was on like a, a you didn't, like a, some journalist, like well-respected journalist was on like a work Zoom. <laughs> And you couldn't he couldn't wait. Yeah. what? <laughs> and you see him pull out like lotion and a couple <gasps> tissues and start jerking off. Meanwhile, he thought his screen was like on like fucking off. And yeah, he got fucking like mini canceled for it or. But I think Foul. that was another pandemic going on during the pandemic of a bunch of men being like, well, I'm at home. Like I'm on what Zoom. Do? Yeah. Like th this work and work meeting is boring as fuck. Like I've participated in my five minutes. I'm just going to mute my screen and mute my and I'm going to open up a window. <laughs> and a lot of guys did not follow through That is nice. uh, and check their work. You know, they didn't dot their I's and cross their T's, so to speak. But yeah, it was um, an epidemic. I think a lot of men got, got d reprimanded. Foul. Uh, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely foul. So anyway. Speaking of foul, I think Summer House. And I'm going to have a really hot take here. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. And I'm kind of nervous to say it. <gasps> Don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. I'm a little nervous. It's a safe space here. Yeah. I mean. Not out there. Only... <laughs> Facts. Out there. It is very scary. <laughs> you definitely might get flamed in the comments, but hey. I, in my head, Kyle and Jax Taylor are the same. <gasps> Hot take. Tell us why. Really? I was going to have a different take about Kyle, which is could not be more opposite. Oh, my God. Yeah. I think they're both just like immature. Sure. Never really. They're like 40 year old men who never really learned to like grow up. Hard and to just argue. Be, yeah. be like normal human beings. I don't think either of them can really communicate. Mm -hmm. They both like to just stir up unnecessary drama. Strong start. Yeah. Hard to argue. I don't know. Like Kyle's cheating history and if he's that much of a scum like Jax Taylor is. Well that was yeah. I wanna know. Is is what I is think there Kyle's was one Kyle had two two incidences on the oh. show. Yeah. And he one cheated on his wife. Okay. Well one was in the early stages of them dating, so I don't yeah. know how intense and was it a make was it a it Swartz was, cheat or was it a so Tom Sandoval cheat? It was a it was a Schwartz cheat. Okay. It was more of a if I did do that kind of situation. And then the second time Lindsay stirred up drama saying that a friend of hers uh saw kyle making out with somebody it was proven to be false but kyle himself couldn't defend his actions oh. so it was again uh if i did do that and she's like the remember. difference between you and i is i don't get blacked out to where i put myself in situations that i have to defend yeah. myself so i did not know kyle had <laughs> cheated because i was thinking almost the same but opposite is Natalie, is this that like Kyle is immature, a pot stir? Con he's he's hot, like like Jax Taylor on the valley. Valley, he's clearly like producing, mm -hmm. like he's hustling. He's trying to he's trying to make TV. Again, not knowing about that past performance, I was just like Kyle's just like out there hustling, but he's ultimately hasn't really done anything deplorable. Unlike Jax Taylor, again, I don't think I could be too hard on Jax Taylor. For the most part, all the people we talk about on these reality TV shows. Our general premise when we talk about them is like they're characters on a TV show. Yeah, this is real life, but it's edited. And honestly, when it comes to Bravo, like I'm as fascinated about wondering, is this like, is this real or is this for, are, are we, how performative, how mm -hmm. for the TV show is this? Yada, yada, yada. I'm not, we're not really, even Sheena, we're not necessarily questioning her character because I don't, I don't really know. But Jax Taylor, he's a piece of shit. He's a horrible human. He's had, He's got a, a record. Decade, a, rec a, a record of decades of just terrible, terrible behavior mm -hmm. where, like, I don't think I could say anything about Jax on the show and feel bad. Yeah. And honestly, 
the difference, and I was going to say this later when we are talking about Vanderpump, but like, I feel differently about Tom Sandoval. Like, I have pity and empathy for Tom Sandoval mm. sometimes. And I have none for Jax Taylor. Because I think Jax Taylor, like, he doesn't care about looking good or bad. He doesn't even know the difference. Mm. He, he has no, like, desire to be the good guy. Yeah. I think Tom Sandoval does. And I, and, I, and I pity him for that. I think Tom Sandoval wants to be thought of as a good person. Mm. And he has the desire to be one. And he's like, I'll pick you up at the airport. I'll do anything for my <laughs> friends. You know, like, he really wants to be the good guy. And he, I, I don't think he comprehends why he's not. And I mm. actually pity him for that. Where Jax, he doesn't care. There's no right or wrong. I'm not letting Tom Sandoval off the hook for his behavior, but I do pity someone who, like, deep down wishes he was the hero and, and he can't figure out why he's not. Mm-hmm. Where Jax Taylor is, he's a bad person. I mean, would you say it's almost like the difference between, like, intentionally intentionally moving through life with mal- malice and and ill intent and then like a Tom Sandoval where you're like, I, I, I don't am compulsively making bad decisions. Yeah, t- Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, where t- t- Tom Sandoval, it's, he is self- selfish, self-centered, eccentric, refuses to grow up and kind of like you were talking about earlier is like, and when it doesn't go right for him, he's just a victim and people don't understand him and he's never really willing to look in the mirror and be like, How, why am I, why is life going this direction mm-hmm. for me? But he, he, I think he has the desire to be mm-hmm. a, a good guy. Mm-hmm. Well, my question though too is that I'm like, I see Jax, Tom Sandoval and Tom Schwartz as like the three musketeers, especially in the early stages. The three of them did all of their nefarious acts together went down, did the whole like oath, you'll never speak this to anybody. And then once their relationship started getting rocky, we're just taking turns throwing each other under the bus. Yeah. So I'm also kind of like, yes, maybe the intent may be different, but I'm like, you're also aiding and abetting your friends, having affairs, cheating on their girlfriends, covering for each other. So like, is the intent, like, does the intention really matter when I'm like, you're okay with the behavior, you enable the behavior? And also partake in the behavior. Like, what makes him so much better than Jax? I don't know. If, I, I don't, I'm not saying he's better. I'm, I'm I just I, <laughs> I sometimes pity him. Yeah. And and again, I I don't find pity to be like I don't want anyone pitying me. If I were, you know, if I find out that people out there be like, you know, I really just feel sorry for Nick. Mm. Like, I'm, like, that sucks. <laughs> God, I'd rather you why? just hate me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's such a like raw mean. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not like, oh, fuck them. Like, they're like a piece of shit. You're like, no, I just feel really sad for But like their sometimes life. I talk to like, <laughs> yeah. the Thomas Sandoval I've gotten to know, it's just like there's utter confusion in between the ears of why life's going this direction for mm. him. And I do. That's it's sad. That is a sad thing. Pity him. Yeah. Back to Carl. So, do you uh, pity <laughs> Carl or Lindsay? No. Oh, neither. Because I feel like, um, Paige and Amanda kind of started to pity, and I don't think necessarily this bad way, but started to feel sorry for Lindsay. Feel sorry for Lindsay, yeah. But why was Paige feeling sorry for Lindsay? I didn't really <laughs> understand why. And like Paige just said, it was just like, I can't believe I'm saying this because I fucking hate her. Um, she's saying she's on her side, and I'm also like Paige wasn't there for like the previous weekend as well. So I don't think she knows the half of it, but I think it's the seeing the men rallying around Carl and being like, Lindsay's this and Carl is so much, you know, better or whatever it is. I think for her, she was like, I don't like seeing that, which I completely understand. But I just don't think she knows the full extent as to like what was occurring in the previous weekends because she's in her own bed. Yeah. And Lindsay also opened up to... Uh, Paige and Amanda about how they have they don't really have sex that often Mm. and so Paige said you're getting married in three months and you don't have sex so that could also be do you think they're trying to be born again virgins (laughs) well there was that part where like um uh, someone pointed out the the jabs who was talking and Paige is like I understand and and uh, it was Amanda and Paige and Craig they were all in the bed oh Craig yeah she was like she kind of like shoot some low blows yeah just like i understand that i mean listen i'm just here to say as a guy like all men really need is a cheerleader in life that's all they it's all they need you know they're not we're not all quite the golden retrievers that tom swartz is but at the end of the day all a guy needs is an attaboy a pat on the back and i believe in you Mm -hmm. and i get it like men often give their women partners a lot of reasons to vent and be frustrated and you know i get it they all need to step up but when you get to that point in your relationship where all you are 
uh, to your woman partner is like, I can't believe I dated this person. You're mm. such a loser. You're mm -hmm. kind of a piece of shit. And the eye rolls and the just like your relationship's over. When you're having conversations with other people trying to validate your feelings because you can't say it to your partner. Mm. Your relationship's it's over. over. Yeah. It's, it's over. Done. Like it's when done. you're just like you're just fucking nitpicking and you and you are low blowing them and yeah. you are saying things just to get under their skin and make them feel worse about who they are and not better. Uh, it's pack up your bags. You might as well quit now. And I, I've been in those relationships. They fucking suck, you know? Terrible. And when you find someone who's just like, you know what? I believe in you. Like every once in a two while. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs <laughs> up. Yeah, you know what? You're kind of annoying and gross, whatever. But like, I see you. You're, you're good. Yeah. You know? It's and, also the tit for tot for me as well. Yeah. Like where she was like, well, if you're going to comment on my drinking, I'm going to comment on your your meat right. usage. And it's just kind of like it shouldn't be like, let's fight fire with fire right before we're getting married. It should no be, one's really listening. No, you're just attacking each other and like keeping tallies of more things to be like, you're in the wrong, you're in the wrong, where it's like you should be communicating and working through this or negotiating with each other what you can and can't right. handle. And just another like note out there. You know, again, there's a lot of reasons why, you know, a couple in a relationship, you know, might not be having the most sex they've ever had. You know, yeah. like we get a lot of calls and ask Nick, be like, oh, like, you know, well, me and my partner are not having as much sex or whatever. And like sometimes it can slow down and that's normal. But again, nothing will make a guy stop wanting to have sex with you more than you like criticizing him. Yeah. And it's not how you look. It's not, you know, anything you're doing. You look great. He finds you just as sexy, but you fucking are mean. Yeah. You cut him, <laughs> you cut him down, you criticize him, you you roll your eyes at him. Mm -hmm. Everything he does is not good enough. You huff and puff. And I'm telling you, if you are dating that guy, he's like, he will look at you like, ugh. Like he will, he will never want to touch you again if that's, that's why. That's why if you're in a relationship and your guys stopped having sex with you, think about how you actually talk to him and treat him. And have you, when was the last time you made him feel good about himself? And again, this is not to say that your partner isn't a hero. Like it, it doesn't have work to do and you don't have reasons to be upset with him. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying if that's how you talk to your guy partner and you guys stop having sex, that's fucking why. But wouldn't, I would also say the, the other side of it, which is if a guy is, is really cutting you down and picking you apart and being really um, just demeaning. Oh, for sure. It, it like it's, the river runs yeah. dry. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Like it's. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Dry. Yes. <laughs> no, no. It clearly goes both ways. But I just don't think we recognize enough the other side. I think we're always fine. Uh, you know, men are pieces of shit. We get it. Uh, wow. But. Well, they're you jacking off during Zoom. <laughs> they are. No women got they're, fired during this process. Yeah, they're fucking, <laughs> listen, guys are creepy, weird, and gross. I fucking get it. But when you remind them of that every fucking day mm -hmm. and you forget to point out every once in a while that they're not <laughs> terrible, disgusting monsters, mm -hmm. it can go a long way. I'm just walking just, around my kitchen being like, Connor, ew. <laughs> ew. Thanks for just existing. Just saying, ew. you know, guys will be like, you know what? I don't. I'm good. Maybe not today. Do you think the focus is so on Lindsay and Carl that people don't talk about Amanda and Kyle fighting all the time? I agree with that. I think 100%. I also do think that like previous seasons, we've just watched so much of Amanda and Kyle that uh, like ups and downs that they're not really like the issue, if that makes sense. I feel like yeah. they've just been the topic of, of season so many times it's, at this time it's Lindsay. It's Carl's like they're season. fighting now will, will lead to their divorce in five years <laughs> but like those two see Carl and Lindsay miserable. Like it, when Carl was talking to Lindsay he was basically saying you guys are fucking terrible together. Without Kyle. Kyle was saying that, yeah, to, Car to Lindsay. What am I, did I, did I say Carl? Carl? Sorry. Okay. Kyle was talking to Lindsay and was like in the, what, it, he seemed like trying to be nice to Lindsay, be like yeah, like you guys are just like fucking unhappy and miserable and like he was trying to tell Lindsay that Carl hates you <laughs> <laughs> while, <laughs> while trying to convince Lindsay that they're both miserable yeah um, I was like also there's nothing worse than getting this type of information from the drunkest person in the room like I was just watching Kyle and I was like oh you're not laying down the points the yeah. way as articulately as you think you are mm -hmm. and I, yeah. because you're you're always getting feedback from someone with a mullet Wait, and, I, and I sported a mullet for a long time so I understand uh -oh. that sometimes his mullet is definitely a little bit more aggressive than yours ever was it is and he just he he just looks like he came from a trailer am I allowed to say that <laughs> it's trailer trash been cancelled like are we not allowed to no oh, it just came out with such like volition <laughs> Does Kyle, does Kyle not look like he just like? I think maybe in his like Elvis suit or whatever that was, it definitely came a little 
like Amanda said, it looked like they hired him for that party. And then yeah, Craig it, on the other side, like, is like looks so hot. He's yeah. like, it was like mascara like like, grease like, on his yeah. face. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle looks like he got dropped off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can I check your oil? Yes, please, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> that is, I will say, you know how we always talk about like, well, I don't know if we always talk about it, but like celebrity couples that you would want to like be in, like, a like threesome watch a sex. Couple slot? Yeah, yes. a third, the third slot. with. A yeah. third with, yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you, like, is this your moment to say you want to have sex with? <laughs> I think Craig, Craig and Paige are like it's such a hot couple and I feel like they have such sexual chemistry. I don't know. I'd maybe not like be in it, but maybe just watch it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is not that a hot me. take? No. Really? <laughs> not for me. Interesting. I love that. Who, who would be a... Hmm. I don't know. Like J-Lo and Ben Affleck? I'd rather watch them than Paige and Craig. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Did you guys think that um, Amanda was justified for getting mad at Kyle for bringing up the whole Jesse Solomon cheat? Er, no, I don't. Flirting. I Kate? think I think I I've learned this in relationships is that y'all really hate it when we embarrass you. Oh yeah, fair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you like it when we embarrass you? <laughs> yeah. I don't think men care. The only way Nally could embarrass me is flirting with another guy in front of me. That's that's I it. I take back what I said about Craig and Page. <laughs> I retract That's my That's not statement. what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We can acknowledge that there are other attractive. Like, that's another thing about Nally and I that we don't care about. Like, we recognize that there are other good look. Well, I'm allowed. She's allowed to say other guys are attractive. I'm not allowed to point out other women. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> it's <Duh>. fine. <laughs> um, but y'all hate it when we embarrass you. Yeah. Guys are not as easily embarrassed. I don't know what Nellie could do that wouldn't embarrass you. You feel like if I, what if I like tried to pick a fight with you in public or like around your family? You don't think you'd be like, really? Like, you don't, can we not? I'd be annoyed for sure. Embarrassed? I don't know. I'd be like, you look terrible right now. If you tried to pick a fight with me, (laughs) (laughs) that came from somewhere deep within. There was eye contact. (laughs) And your outfit sucks. (laughs) And your wing eyeliner is lopsided. <laughs> no, but you know, what, you know what I'm saying? Like, Kyle saying that truly embarrassed her. Well, that's, that's the feeling she felt. She felt embarrassed for herself. Listen, Kyle, should he have not have said it? Of course not. Was it a bit out of pocket? Obviously. I don't think it's so much about, like, the, like what He's it was. Wrong, it's the reaction. Is that at, if, if Craig was a super testosterone-filled, like, you, you did what? Like, you know what I mean? Now everybody's fighting this weekend and there was and, and you just get to sit back and kick back and be like, well, I started that. You know what I mean? Like that to me would be embarrassing. It's nice that Craig didn't have that reaction. Craig, Craig's very secure with who he is. A thousand percent. He is not in any way threatened by any of the guy there. Oh, he handled it so well. He was yeah. like, yeah, Paige is hot. Yeah. Duh. I expect that. Mm-hmm. That is a guy who is definitely not threatened by what's his name? Jesse. Jesse Sullivan. <laughs> yeah. Which fair. Yeah. How could you be? <laughs> fair. Yeah. Fair. Um. But yeah, what what's uh, Kyle's Amanda? Amanda, yeah, Amanda was just embarrassed. And what what annoyed me about Kyle and when he says the when you have to keep saying it was a joke, I meant it to be funny. Like, sure, you might have meant it to be funny. <laughs> Clearly, it was not. Didn't you don't land. keep you don't keep to keep saying it was a joke when you say something not funny uh, <laughs> that you meant to be funny. Like he's like, if I double down ten times over, eventually everyone fuck? will agree with me. It was a joke. <laughs> don't you get it? Ha ha ha! I'm like no. No. no, no. Nevertheless, he wasn't wrong for pointing out the fact that Jesse is a pig. And I don't think Kyle needs to apologize for Jesse to Jesse. Jesse was hitting on Paige. It has nothing to do Craig Craig being secure with himself and in his relationship doesn't like make what Jesse did okay. Right. I agree with that too. I wish Bravo wouldn't have blurred out the married woman's face who was trying to go home with Jesse. <laughs> Sorry. She definitely she, did not sign that release. I was going to say, yeah. she knew. She was like, yeah. absolutely and not. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. no. um, and, then him t- and then her texting him later being like, if my friends can't come, I'll definitely come over. I want to fuck you. What? Yeah. And him like reading that out loud. Ooh. Sick. No, Because Je- <laughs> he's so conflicted too. He's just like, oh, I'm just I trying do? to be in a relationship, but it's like these, these things keep happening married. to me. <laughs> yeah. Jesse is the epitome of tall privilege because let's just be honest, his face is like whatever. <laughs> He's like Austin. It's him and Austin are just like tall overlooks, all terrible qualities. Yeah. Like their height has gotten them plenty of sex and they've gotten them with plenty of sex where like, you know, drunk girls just see tall Mm -hmm. and then they and they see hot enough. He's I mean, Jesse's woken up a lot of times with women looking at him going, oh, (laughs) 
And Could you he, stand up? Can you yeah, get out uh, of bed? Stand up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> fuck, he got me again. <laughs> All right, get back in. Uh, but he doesn't care, you know. And he clearly is sleeping with women and married women and women in relationships to feel good about his small, whatever you want, small mm-hmm. identity, small mm-hmm. uh, confidence, small. You know. You know who knows something is something small is going on mm-hmm. with Jess. Uh, so I, I have no sympathy for a guy who like his whole, his, that's all I remember him from this season is like, I'm the guy who likes to fuck girls in relationships. <laughs> I'm cool. It's like, all right. Oh, how old are you? Isn't he like in his thirties? Yeah. 30. They all are. Yeah. <laughs> they all are. Um, what about Paige saying that she doesn't want Craig to contribute to her rent? Good like, for her. Bravo. Valid. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Turn yeah. Mm-hmm. Turn on. Agreed. Turn on. Green flag. What do you think about, um, Schwartz saying that? Him and Sheena made out. <gasps> Segway. <Ooh. sighs> Sorry. What do you think? That it was just too believe? casual. Who do we believe? Obviously, Schwartz. Schwartz. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. Schwartz is like the like love, the golden retriever. The I'm golden telling retriever. you. Yes. He's like I just did, we just what, didn't no, no, no. Well, If you watch the after show, you learn that the only reason Schwartz even rem- remembered this makeout from twelve years ago is because it sounds like allegedly Sheena at some like hangout was like, remember the time when we made out, right? And then all of a sudden, like. In on the after show, you you watch Sheena have to actually say, because before I watch the after show, I'm like, is Sheena low-key accusing Swartz of sexual assault? Essentially. Because, like, she is. So she's mm-hmm. like, she's saying that- He without, cornered her. He mm-hmm. cornered her. Took cornered, you to a dark hallway in Vegas. Yeah. Where does that exist? Yeah. And without her <laughs> consent, stuck his tongue down her throat. Yeah. And that she pushed him away. And she pushed pushed him away. That's some big words. Those are some some big big words. And also, if I can just take a little moment on the VPR timeline, is that season one... Historian here. Everybody disliked her, right? Season two is, I'd rather be gangbanged than be in a car with these women. Mm -hmm. You didn't like Katie either. So that's why it's like, it's hard for me to believe with seeing how she reacts to things that like she wasn't like, Yes, got one on Katie too. Yeah. At first, Sheena almost got me when Sheena was telling the story. Now and I are watching, and I'm and I literally turned to Nell and I go, "Babe, what do you think?" I mean, okay, maybe. And then I, all I could think about is, wait, if someone tried to make out with either of us and one of us didn't tell the other person, I'd be fucking pissed. That's it's. it's the, That's all you need to know. Yeah. The fact she says it's right before she gets engaged to Shay, so she's been with him for years at this point. That I'm like, you didn't think it was necessary to tell your soon to be husband. Who like has no loyalty to Katie. It's not like he would have gone to Katie and been like, oh my gosh, Mm -hmm. can you believe (laughs) my fiance made out? Like, no, he would like she should have just gone to him and been like, oh my God, you will never believe what fucking happened in Vegas. Tom Schwartz. The man was on the show for like four years and said all of 10 words on camera. Like, (laughs) he's like, hey, your boyfriend like cornered me and like threw me up against the wall, made me really uncomfortable, stuck his tongue down my throat. I had to push him off of me. Yeah. She could have told that story. She didn't. But, but it's also like her putting the the sunscreen on Jax's back and then at the reunion being like, I knew all the girls would be mad, but she played victim during the, the period of time. So that's where I'm like going back to it. I'm like, I think you enjoyed the fact that Schwartz did that, but you also knew it was going to mess up your relationship. Mm-hmm. So therefore didn't say a word. But she has to clarify at on the on the after show she's like i just want to point out that like he did not for it was not did she even say it wasn't like sexual assault yeah no she didn't say she said he didn't force me or anything but she's like, but was, he didn't ask, ask for consent yeah yeah it's like uh, i don't know i don't believe you uh i i believe yeah i believe schwartz like how shitty you guys you're making out with ariana all over a casino like floor that i'm just like why wouldn't you just make out with schwartz and then you have brock Going to Swartz, mm-hmm. telling Swartz, hey, your ex-wife hooked up with your friend. Now, listen, that is obviously messy by our friend Katie to hook up with Tom Swartz's friend. But as Katie reminded us, she, when they got divorced, begged, pleaded with Swartz to say, hey, we have friends. We have mutual friends. Can we fuck whoever you want? Mm-hmm. Do your thing. Get that loose dick wet. Whatever you want, <laughs> Swartz. You know? <laughs> Ooh. I'm just trying to say that Katie oh, was, dick is but keep it out of the friend. Imagery. Yeah, keep it out of the yeah. friend. Katie yeah. was is trying to be as mature as possible. Mm-hmm. Katie, again, multiple times, I want to point out because I think we quickly forget that Katie asking Schwartz for divorce was not because she didn't love him anymore or didn't want to make it w- work, but she she gave up. She gave up because Schwartz never ever gave her the love and affection that she begged for for mm-hmm. years. 
And finally, she left a man that she didn't want to leave and still had similar friends and said, please don't fuck any of my friends or people I know. And Swartz, as we now know, you know, didn't. Even Joe, like, you know, Katie's not friends with her, but she knows her. Like, she just knows people. Like, Kate, what Katie doesn't want to hear is like, hey, you know. Of course. She fucked. Tom didn't oblige. So is it a bit of retaliation? Maybe. I don't know. But like Brock goes to Schwartz and be like, hey man, it was your mate Max. And Brock is deeply offended that Schwartz isn't. <laughs> mm-hmm. Meanwhile, Sheena is won't shut up about having sex with John Mayer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She is like, ever since this has come out, the internet is just flocking to old posts of sheena she's like she was posting us weekly articles about this in her like on her social media she you know is just going on and on and on about meanwhile john mayer i'm assuming through andy cohen because like john and andy are like best friends Mm -hmm. and like there's these reports being like john and like grant i do i believe sheena that uh, her and john had a past sure but the fact that john's out there being like no it never happened just being like he you're forcing john Mayer to just deny ever knowing you Mm -hmm. do you think i don't know if i mean it would make sense with watch what happens live history to have sheena on and do you think andy would ask like since it is his best friend I don't think the only reason he won't is because John's like don't don't, please don't do it and like they're that close of friends that Mm -hmm. i think uh that friendship would would trump uh andy his doing his job yeah, he's probably like just please let this die <laughs> please let this die because sheena just but, won't shut up about it meanwhile Bla- brock doesn't seem to care i mean yeah i guess support your wife's past but like why do you care if Schwartz doesn't care it's his ex-wife they're not even together anymore i was like why don't you care that your wife has 57 people's locations 56. half of which she's dated that's weird yeah, yeah. That's weird. We're coll- that's a that's that's like collecting. That's oh. like a serial collector correct collecting trophies. How many do you have? Any, do you share locations with anyone? I share with my whole family mm-hmm. boyfriend. Okay. I love it. Like and I, but I do it in like a cute way where like if someone's coming over, these are people I want to know. I, I want to know I where I am. So yeah. I'll be like, they're like, I'm on my way, and I'll track my, my my man, and I'll be like, okay, he's at the door, and I'll be at the door when he comes in, mm. and so I'll cute. do like a little cute thing, a little safety, you know, <laughs> a little, and a little I follow safety. each other, right? Like, uh, you but know. the I idea of the idea that. My my, my entertainment or joy would exactly derive not. from like putting together and like seeking like other people's comings and goings. That's weird. Especially it, like other men. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. weird that she's like watching it. Like, well, that's how home. she found out about Max. And that's where I was yeah. like, we don't think that that's a giant red flag that she not only like saw it, but then decided to check it multiple times. Multiple that's times. That's none Over, of your business. Yeah, she checked it that night and then she checked it again the next morning. Over what over 10 it's like not your friends or family some of us have large families but sheena is going to party but let's follow each other's locations oh my God, let's do that. instead of exchanging numbers They're it's like, like let's okay, exchange sure, locations like, yeah. i guess or like, like a, imagine like getting a text that's like hey i see that you're around the block you should come here and it's like no like i i that that creeps me out no i hate when even my sister does that when she's like oh you're at mom's and yeah I'm like, yeah <laughs> it's also just weird that she cares about like People she doesn't talk to anymore. She cares about what they would think if they got a notification saying she stopped sharing locations with them. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. It, How appro- that's that's so appropriate. Oh no, so and so like you know some every once in a while you're like, hey, share your GPS for an hour. We're at a festival. Come and find mm-hmm. us here. We're at this restaurant, yeah. whatever. But like, no, I've never once when someone's like stopped sharing their GPS was I offended <laughs> because they didn't want me knowing exactly where they were they also wouldn't like i have recently stopped sharing locations with a few people and we don't talk anymore and the only way they would see that is if they went back to our text th- like went to go and text me which they wouldn't do because you don't, don't get talk. a notification right. no, you don't get, like, in the chat yeah, it's so not she's like a- checking then to see that's, Maybe yeah, that's that's you weird have to she's hyper vigilant yeah. about it yeah. Yeah. yeah but don't you feel like in a general sense if you're that level of like sitting there and using your free, because she has what, like a three year old and yeah. you are parents like yeah. you kids take up 99 percent of your time. So you have that one percent hour where you're chilling. You're using that time to look at yeah. other people's locations like you have to go. What is not happening in your own life? Yeah. Like, what are you feeling a lack of that you need to you're like that bored. Exactly. She's you're like, like, I can't fuck John Mayer anymore. She can't fuck John Mayer. <laughs> but know. he's just down the street. <laughs> <laughs> 
immediately John's checking his phone. Does he still follow my location? Oh my Holy God. shit. Uh, I, I'm curious how many people today are sharing their GPS with Sheena because after, after that, that episode, episode <laughs> everyone was like, fuck <laughs> this. Like, I forgot. Yeah. Wait, how many I followers truly, does she have now? How many like, people? I have nine people on mine. I think two people, I see their location, but I, like I said, I had stopped sharing with, their, with them. I have a question about that too, though. So if you stop sharing your location, but they don't, then you can still see where yeah. they are, but like they have to do it. You can't yeah. be like, I don't want to see you anymore. Correct. They have to do it. I mean, she even called out like her ex-boyfriend, Robbie from Bachelor and was like, and I don't even think they actually fully dated. I think they like hooked up for the show, but it's like, she's like, I still follow him. And I'm like, that's weird. That's weird. Wait, <laughs> Sheena dated what? Robbie from the Bachelor? Uh-huh. Robbie Hayes? Uh, Yeah. The mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. 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 Wait, He's is on- that the one who had... And OnlyFans? Uh, no, that's that Chad I, Johnson. Okay, I was like, oh. I can't confirm that, but uh, yeah, well, you'll see I know see Chad it. was on the OnlyFans. Maybe Ro- Ro- Robbie might have been on OnlyFans. It's, it's entirely possible. You'll see him in upcoming seasons as y'all venture into Vanderpump season. Really? Yeah, you will. They do a they Bachelor did. style date. Wow. Uh huh. I didn't know they dated. I thought they just like. I I feel like it was for the show. Mm-hmm. Okay. She because then she starts talking to his roommate um, that she was trying to set up with Brittany, Adam. Right. And Adam and Robbie went to college together. Anywho, I know too much. It's great. I'm <laughs> looking at you like you got the answers, girl. You know what it and is. And this is before Brock. This is, yeah, way before Brock. This is How Adam. Brock been before in the Rob. picture? Brock just came in uh, season nine or season 10. Season nine or season 10. Oh, so not season, that long. Yeah. No, season nine because season 10 was Lala's apology tour for him. So yeah, season nine. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it was what do we Chad think Johnson. Of, <laughs> yeah, Chad Johnson. Okay. What do we think of uh, Lala showing up to... Uh, Tom Swartz's what is it? Screaming therapy? What was that? Very Tom Swartz. Very Tom. Uh, no, Sandoval. Tom Sandoval. San, Sandoval. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, the screams. Yeah, that was a little. Alarming. I had to fast forward. <laughs> do you think? It made me uncomfortable. Do you think all the all the r- kicking, crying, screaming that Sheena and Lala are doing online, throwing shade to Katie and Ariana, is really all about them being mad that they have to film these scenes? With Tom Sandoval. Because no one else will. <laughs> because, like, I just, it seems very unbelievable that Lala, out of nowhere, would be like, you know what? I'm going to mend this fence. And I'm going to show up to our, my friend Ariana's house when she's not there to support Tom Sandoval, who she refuses to talk to. Well, Lala's confused me a lot this season, but especially this episode. Because even with the Tom Sandoval thing, and then when you see her talking to Ariana, she kind of like casually breezes by it. Like it was just like on a whim that she made this decision. But it was also Tom Schwartz telling her at the juice bar about making out in Vegas. And then instead of going to Sheena and giving Sheena your best friend who you're raising a kid with or your kids with uh, the benefit of the doubt or like allowing her to have her side, she says, I'm going to go straight to Katie, stir up some stuff, even though Katie and I were literally just screaming at each other last episode. And to me, like I, I stopped it and took, looked at my boyfriend and was like, I would never do that to my best friend. Like I would never go to somebody else being like, don't want to give you time to figure out what you're mm-hmm. going to say. Yeah. So that was kind of brutal to me where I'm like, I just feel like Lala's kind of moving all over the place and I don't understand it at all. Like there's no mm-hmm. loyalty to me. I mean, again, I just... Uh, Ariana's asking her friends to pick a side right. and that's fine. Sometimes you do that as adults. She doesn't have to take that side. She can disagree with Ariana taking it, but you know, like acting like Ariana is doing something wrong. And I'll say this every week, just because she doesn't want to fuck with her ex anymore or anyone who does like, doesn't make her the bad guy. You don't have to forgive people. You can just move on. I think yeah. it would be a little different if they were, hanging out while not filming like i think there's a little bit of a pass because they are making a tv show and no one else will film with tom sandoval yeah and so i do think lala is in this stage of her life where she's like i'm not carrying like her saying like this isn't my fight like what I you like i don't you know so like i forgive you for what you've done and i'm not in a place to judge you and like i like let's move on well i was gonna say there's a difference between saying that and then showing up to Sandoval's house because she could say, hey, Tom, between you and I, like we never been that close. Where would but she like, have said that? At that fucking at the mocktails mock- the night before. Yeah, she lunch. did she did say it and then she showed up anyway. But that's what I'm saying. She could have said, listen, I don't have a problem with you. We all make mistakes. I've made mistakes. You made mistakes. Just between you and I, I hold no ill will. 
obviously, you know, I'm friends with your ex. She feels a certain way about you. So like, just so you know, like me avoiding you isn't personal. I'm obviously like going to support my friend. Mm hmm. You know what I'm saying? She could. So it only bothers you that she went to his house to say that conversation. And I'm not... not bothered. I don't give a shit. But I'm just saying, like, we've all moved on from friends before. Yeah. And we've had other friends that we had to go to those friends and say, like, I don't fuck with that person anymore. You still might, but I don't. So just so you know, you fucking with them affects me. Mm -hmm. I feel a certain way about it. I'm not trying to tell you to like. I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm just saying. There's. I have. I have various reasons of why I don't want to fuck with this person for my mental health or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you do like triggers me. And again, I don't want to tell you what to do, but I'm just letting you know, I feel a certain way about right. it. And I can't help how I feel, you know? And if, and if your friend said, yeah, I'm going to fuck with them anyways, then again, you would, you would just feel a certain way. And I, that's all I'm saying mm -hmm. is this like, and we're also not talking about just like, Oh, like you talk shit behind my back. We're talking like you cheated with a friend on, from on a long-term partner that like for me, if one of my friends got cheated on, I don't think I need to find a place in my heart to be like, well, you made a mistake, but like, yeah. just know I'm not mad at you. I just think there's a difference between not holding a grudge against Sandoval and deciding to build a newfound relationship with Sandoval mm -hmm. to the point where then you start fighting with your very friend about how quickly or unquickly they are forgiving their ex. Mm -hmm. Like weird. That doesn't track for me. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's sure. almost like there's a feeling of like, can you be neutral with me? Can we can we be in the same space and it not be activated? Or are you really actually trying to like make new connections, friendship, jokes together? Like, let's hang out outside of this space. I totally hear what you're saying. Yeah. Like Lala just again, I, I wonder if she's just mad that she has to hang out with Tom and that's why she's taking it out on on Ariana and Katie. Well, everyone's saying that like the reason why they bought the houses in the valley is because they're trying to jump ship what do you mean like uh lala and sheena both bought houses in like sherman oaks so they're th thinking that they're trying to jump over to add on to the cast of the valley versus staying on vanderpump i don't think vanderpump's going anywhere i mean the ratings are like i know we have been talking about oh is this the last season but like the ratings are doing very well it has been an entertaining season they win in the reunion also like sheena recently was just like the star of the reunion was lala mm -hmm. but like I don't, I think Katie went, I think Sheena went into the season thinking that like Ariana was going to be the villain and like so far Sheena's the villain. So like <laughs> if you're Lala, how do you feel about Sheena being like, you know who the star of the reunion is? You know who's going to look great? Lala. I would feel a little <laughs> uncomfy comfy if I was Lala knowing that Sheena thinks I'm the star mm. because Sheena's been a little bit off. I just don't know where Vanderpump goes from here. Like, sure, this is a great season. We're figuring it out. But, like, next season, what happens? Well, sh Lala is going to be with child, mm -hmm. uh, her second, mm -hmm. with a, a sperm donor. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's interesting. Uh, Sheena and Brock will be getting divorced, probably. <laughs> that's possible. <laughs> you know? I want to see Katie find love. I want to... <laughs> And I want to see Tom Sandoval and Tom Swartz uh, date a couple models that will obviously piss off a, bu a bunch. Like, I want an age gap with. That, you know, it's happening, right? So, yeah, I know. Okay. But I want to see that relationship. <laughs> I want to see the Tom's new girlfriend. Okay. Uh, who's a bit younger than him. Uh-huh. Who's a model. Uh-huh. Who's clearly going to piss off all of the castmates. I want, I want to see that relationship unfold. Like, there's, there's storylines to be, be, be had. Yeah. I mean, it looks like Ariana would be leaving the show. Because she's doing Love Island yeah, no, and that right? Island. scheduling, uh, filming scheduling. What's the word I'm looking Conflict. for? Conflict. Thank, Conflict. You. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank what, you. What do we think of Lala calling out uh, her castmates for allegedly buying followers? How bored are you? <laughs> like for me, I'm like you went on a website to get this information. Like why? Why? It was sent in to her apparently. But even then, to share it, I don't know. It just like where I'm just like, who cares? Well, Lala points out she's just like her her numbers are based off the idea that apparently inactive followers means bought followers and while i'm no expert in this i'm pretty sure that inactive followers just means inactive followers some of which may be bought but like you know for the vanderpump cast for example they've been in the game online and having followers for over a decade you don't mm -hmm. think some of those people that followed them in 2015 <laughs> are still using their instagram right. maybe they just made a new account maybe it's inactive mm -hmm. so there is that and Katie having allegedly 40,000 inactive, like 40,000 followers 
having 1.6 million followers is nothing. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's meaningless. Mm -hmm. Even if she bought 40,000 followers, like there's a one day Katie was like, eh, eh, maybe I could. Also like people with that size of following, like, and I've had this happen. I remember when 2014 and it, it, it it's, it's like the psychology of getting followers overnight really does fuck with you. Cause then like you get a bunch of followers and then you're off the show. And then every time you post, you just lose a bunch of followers. <laughs> you're like, Oh my God, I'm never posting again. <laughs> Like, like, I forgot I was following what is, them. What is going on? You know, like it really does fuck with your psyche. And yeah. then I remember a couple of nights, all of a sudden, like I was just getting followers, like just overwhelming. I'm like, did I do something fun? Am I, like, what is going on? And realizing they were all bots. Like your fans can buy you followers. That's a thing. Oh. Uh, or random people, you know, that, that has happened uh, to people. Like, I don't know if Katie has or not. And I'm just like, it can happen. But 40,000 bundled up with 1.6 is nothing. And like, why are you coming after? Like, again, it's just another example of Lala just throwing a grenade at Katie for like, what? For what? What is going on? Well, I thought it's funny that it's Katie and Ariana that that have like the most followers bought. Oh, and, know, Lisa. Sheena. and Lisa. Yeah. Lisa oh, no, Vanderpump? Jax has the most. Uh, yeah, they yeah, said Jax. Lisa has 477,000 inactive and Jax has 953,000 inactive. How many followers does Jax have? <laughs> like, I want to say nine something. Yeah. What? Yeah, like on the smaller side of one million. What is it? There's no way he's bought in two thirds of his followers. That's what I'm saying. But at the same time, for Jackson, I'm not really suppressed. Well, he's might be a piece of shit, but he's a potential for some a good follow. Like I get why people follow him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, one point two million. Yeah, there's no way. Yeah. Th- yeah, th- there's no way this... he would only have three hundred thousand followers. It, uh, yeah, like some of this just, is just unbelievable. The math is not mathing. She's mm-hmm. also saying Ariana has 707K and then Lisa has 477K in active followers. Like these numbers are just huge. Mm-hmm. But, she, but Lala has zero. And, and Lala has zero. And that's what I find Z- where that's I'm like, zero. Not even Lala 10, not even 100. Zero not one in actor and follower? No. Yeah. And they've all had fans buy them followers at some point. They probably didn't even realize. Yeah. 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 I don't believe any of these numbers. I only realize, like, this is like in 2014 when I had 50,000 followers and like, uh, I remember one night getting followers and being like, what is going on? Like, did I do something? And then realized they were all bots. <laughs> Devastating. Um, people's managers can buy them followers. Oh. That happens too. So did you see that um, the Joe bullying, I brought that up and it ties in with your whole followers thing, whatever, because James mm-hmm. posted his like merch oh, yeah. mm. and it did not go over well. No. Everyone in the comments was like, this does, this was a miss. Like read what, the room. What, what was sloppy the merch? Joe. Color sloppy sloppy Joe. Joe. And it was like a sloppy Joe with like eyelashes. Oh my God. Because <laughs> he made the comment on the show and people laughed. And so then he went and made merch. Which it was definitely like timing was good. It yeah. was like a, a funny joke, you know, I guess yeah. if you're not Joe. Um, but then to make a t-shirt out of it, it just... Not that's, everything has to be merch. No. Truly. You know, he did great with the worm with the mustache, but like <laughs> yeah. it's time to move Call on it. from that. Did I see somewhere that he offered to split the proceeds with Joe uh, of uh, the merch? Split? Allie made him. <laughs> Allie made an apology video. and she Allie was, made the video? Well, like James is holding it being like, oh, I guess this didn't go over well. And Allie's like, I apologize for my sloppy James. Um, and he's like, I can't take down the shirt uh, ad because I boosted it, but... I'll, I'll share the proceeds with you, Joe, or whatever. Wait, wait, he can't or share, take, what not do you mean split. he boost? He he bought. He like boosted the post or whatever. He, he paid he, marketing. He yeah, paid there for you marketing go. dollars to sell t-shirts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a hustle. Mm. Uh, that was sad, and I think Sheena being like, "Take your fucking hat off, I'm gonna bully you." Like, yeah, it was, it was just gross, and I think like. And Lala made a good point of being like, "If I'm wearing a hat and someone is like, take your fucking hat off, like, no." I'm sorry. No. Why? Like that was very mean, girl. It's mm-hmm. also very. Uh, I saw a, a TikTok of like a group of guys talking about, I guess, like icks that women can do, and it was the girl who like takes the hat off of a guy's head mm-hmm. and like won't give it back. Oh yeah. my god, that is so. Oh icky. yeah. yeah so <laughs> I know. So <laughs> what you're talking about. It's like, ooh, <laughs> like, oh. give me my fucking hat back. Why are you doing? You're that? like, this is not as cute as you think. It's, it's not at all. <laughs> It was very high yeah, school. Yeah, I hate that person. Yeah. 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 No, it made me sad, too. I was like, nobody deserves to be treated like that, especially when it's Ariana and Katie who have the reason to be upset with Joe. But, like, you don't have to go hard at making her feel unwanted in a public space at that. No. You know? No. It was rough. 
It was rough. The Valley. Oh, actually, The Valley, which we'll get to right after, because right now, Elizabeth Wagmeister from <gasps> CNN is going to be zooming in to talk about all the things, the P. Diddy scandal. Oh my because God, I'm so confused. I have so many questions. I have so many questions. And I thought it'd be appropriate to have our friend of show, Elizabeth Wagmeister from CNN, uh, come on. And because she's been covering the story with great detail. And this is a story like I want to make sure we get right, because there's so much misinformation out there that I just don't want to be like spreading misinformation. Yep. I want to be getting the real tea. And then when we come back, we will uh, get into the valley. Also, don't forget that this Thursday, Daisy from your favorite Bachelor season since I don't know when, uh, will be with us on Going Deeper. Also, Jojo Siwa returns for the intro of Going Deeper to talk about her new music video. She is turning heads and- Tyler Cameron announces he has OnlyFans. <gasps> Right now? But is it April Fool's? April, April Fool's, <laughs> motherfucker. I'm so tired of this. He said the reveal y'all have been wait y'all have been asking for. Head to OnlyFans to see more. Link in bio. What's the bio? Is it a charity for his new show? <laughs> no, it is 100% OnlyFans. <laughs> <gasps> it's real. No. Going home with Tyler Cameron. It's for his show. The show's Bachelor called- Bachelor, builder, businessman. It's for his show. It's, it's a promo for his new show. I mean, this- It's a great way to you get people to subscribe. You guys discuss He looks great. I mean, subscribe. Uh, um, excuse me. <laughs> did you just tell Natalie to subscribe? <laughs> I think you did. For, for research purposes. <laughs> research. It's for work. Oh. It's hot. Yeah, that's not what I was expecting to see. So it's real? I wonder how much money he's making just off people being like, wait, is this real? Right, <laughs> just subscribing to see if it was a joke or not. See, yeah. that goes right into our previous Fools, theory yeah. about how oh, launching things on April Fool's for free. is brilliant. Nobody subscribes and he's like, yep, nope, it was a joke. You can yeah. subscribe for yeah, right. free. Ooh, done. I don't have to, I have to put in an email and a password. It's also going to get a notification that Natalie Joy has <laughs> subscribed to his account. <laughs> That's, you should have put that's Nick's. the best part. Yeah, you should have yeah. Nick's. Yeah. 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 Be like, uh, buddy, <laughs> hate to break it to you. <laughs> Just want to be a good you, friend. You want me to decline this one? <laughs> when Nick was like, Natalie couldn't do anything to embarrass me. <laughs> he goes to the bathroom and I'm like, son, you go to Tyler Cameron's OnlyFans. He goes to the bathroom and Natalie has an OnlyFans when we get back. <laughs> Nothing. And when Nick gets back, I'm gonna announce Natalie Joy has an OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm so confused. Can you just ask him, Nick? Because I I've am. I've made an OnlyFans account now, and now <laughs> it's like I gotta. You can subscribe for free, but you gotta put in a, a, a card. I'm just, I'm <laughs> I don't want this monthly charge. His his catchphrase is "Going home with me is easier than you think." It's got to be April Fools. Also, like, listen, that's a lot of admin to. Now and I a were, joke. were again back to house shopping. You uh -huh. know, we are we are aiming big. And I thought to myself, well, what if it all goes wrong? We might need to start an OnlyFans. I the reality, re the reality is that Ty Ty Tyler Cameron would make She said, we, I already have the dollars. backup ready. <laughs> Tyler, Cam Ca Tyler Cameron would make millions of dollars. A thousand percent. I could post my pre-mom content, which was literally just like me in a swimsuit by the pool on OnlyFans and make money. I was like, yeah. Larsa Pippen was making six figures from foot photos. Didn't, what did, did Denise Richards Denise. say she was making every day? So many people signed up Remember to get out of Remember all the debt. conversations we had before OnlyFans existed? And it was always like, would you suck someone's dick for like $4 <laughs> million dollars or $1 million? All these crazy things you got asked to do like for a $1 million. And when it comes to OnlyFans, like- Now you can. You can do it. <laughs> you're going to get a $1 million if you're willing to do any of this shit that you were like once been like, oh, no, I would totally do that for a $1 million. That's you know? a great ad for OnlyFans. Remember it, when you <laughs> no, no, you can. We could make the best OnlyFans commercial, <laughs> like all this shit you said you would do. Uh, for a half a million dollars. Here's your chance. Do it now. <laughs> Do it now. <laughs> so maybe Tyler's just like, you know what? Fuck it. Like he would make. Tom, I still, I'm, I'm still here to say Tom Sandoval. The fact that he is not on OnlyFans, it is child. such a miss. What? Wait, what? <laughs> what? Your child. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. We think they're zooming in on Tyler Cameron's penis. <laughs> That's what I thought was happening. Oh my god. Uh, She's so tiny thigh. I know. The tiny thigh. Also, I was thinking about speaking of babies. It's it's amazing how like anything they do is cute compared to like if it was like an adult. Yes, I thought about this as I was going to the bathroom. Oh, oh. <laughs> all right. But sure. like River will <laughs> sneeze, fart, and puke all at the same time, <laughs> and it's like, oh my god, it's so adorable. Can you imagine if any of us like sneezed, farted, and puked all at once? 
I'll never see people again. I almost did when I got my <laughs> IUD put in. <laughs> I also did when they checked my cervix. And yeah. it was like the same pain. She literally, the midwife who did it, she was like, so I just watched your body do what a lot of my like delivery patients have. Wait, why do you have a where... midwife put an IUD? That's a, is that a thing? A midwife does yeah. this? Yeah. Interesting. And yeah. she was like, your body basically just tried to puke poop and pass out all at the same time she was like that was fun to watch and i was like oh my god oh, great. Uh, just like when so you fun. were 18 years old yeah. yeah well when our daughter does it it's the most adorable thing and in the world. we're also like good girl yeah. <laughs> Judy, we're so proud of you but yeah if i like did that at work i would never sh- i would be uh, yes. quit <laughs> oh. <laughs> Allie, take over <laughs> Literally. Uh, wow. Since we're on the topic. Yeah, can people like do I look tired? <laughs> we we both look tired. We I don't are, think you look tired. Oh my god, I think I well, I put on some makeup today, but Do I that, look tired? Like I would say if you look tired, like yeah, he looks like uh he's, he's just what's woke up in the morning. I'm just tired of the doomsday parents out there online who are just like every fucking post are like you look so fucking tired and I'm like, "Do I?" <laughs> And it's like, I don't even think they're actually looking at my face. They're just like, they see me holding a baby and like, listen, I know parenting is hard. I'm sorry that we, Natalie and I are loving every moment of it, but I am like so tired of like the doomsday, like parents out there. It's like, oh, better wait for this. Oh, parent, yeah. this sucks. Oh, like <laughs> you're getting going to get like... no sleep. And like, and, and you can't, you can't go online and be like, you know, I love being a dad without them being like offended mm-hmm. that you're enjoying every moment with your kid. Oh, like, you're having fun Why now? do I have to couch everything? But like, you know, I get it. Like sometimes it's very, really tiring to have a kid, but like, you know, we love it. But like, and everyone's like, well, it's not that easy for everybody. <laughs> it's like, I didn't say it was it's like, fuck mm-hmm. off. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just like the doomsday parents out there be like oh don't have a kid like that ah. sounds like jesse on the valley he's like i loved playing hockey but i can't do it now because i've got hockey, a kid bro yeah what a nice little segue well we'll get back to that we'll get back to that <laughs> after elizabeth eggmeister <laughs> Vessi. all right all you walking warriors out there who are tired of damp wet feet wherever you are walking to it is time to check out and invest in Vessi because Vessi is making waterproof sneakers that's right waterproof not water resistant waterproof they got every type of sneaker you could possibly want that is going to keep your feet dry and comfortable so whether you are walking to work in whatever city you are in avoiding those potholes and puddles you don't even have to avoid them anymore you're gonna step in them. Don't worry, your feet will stay dry. Or if you're hiking, vacationing, wherever you go, Vessi's the only sneaker you need. Yeah, I feel like Vessi is such a great gift for anyone who loves outdoors, who loves, I mean, definitely it wouldn't be like a me thing. I'm definitely not a hiker, but like anyone who is a hiker yeah. or a runner, I feel like. But you do like walking in the city. Duh. Yeah. And I also don't like wet feet. Who likes wet feet? We're subway people. When we go to New York and uh, the thing about uh, the subway is sometimes the water when it's raining kind of floods the subway. Boy, when that happens and you're wearing not Vessi sneakers, <laughs> they got some great shoes like the weekend sneaker, your go to classic, your kind of everyday uh, walking sneaker. You also have your storm burst low top, a super fun sneaker, uh, a ton of different designs, all of which will keep your feet dry and comfortable. All right, so if you are tired of uh, some damp feet and you just want to have some comfortable, reliable sneakers that are keep you super dry, you got to check out Vessi. Elevate your summer activities with Vessi's Storm Burst and We Can Choose. Discover more at Vessi.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Get your pair today to get an automatic 15% off your first purchase at checkout and be ready to stay cool and dry. Zoa, you've got to check out Zoa, Dwayne The Rock Johnson's energy drink. Zoa just launched a brand new campaign. It's all about BDE, Big Dwayne Energy. They've got a really awesome new commercial that you can check out at Zoa's Instagram or YouTube channels. Zoa Energy is a better for you energy drink with great taste, electrolytes, B and C vitamins, and zero sugar. It's made with caffeine from natural sources to provide balanced energy with no crash. When you drink Zoa Energy drinks, it gives you Big Dwayne Energy which gives you the swag, confidence, and energy to help you conquer your day. Here at Vile Files, my team has loved Zoa to give them the extra boost to get through their days. With ingredients that enhance energy levels, Zoa Energy helps my team find the spark and motivation they need 
to get their job done. They've got eight incredible flavors like Tropical Punch, Wild Orange, White Peach, and now Frosted Grape. My team loves Frosted Grape and Cherry Limeade. So get some big Dwayne energy and order Zoa Energy today. Available online or at stores near you. Find out where you can find it at zoaenergy.com. And find retailers like Amazon, 7-Eleven, Costco, Circle K, and more. Hello. Hi. How you doing, Elizabeth? Good. How are Welcome you? Show. Okay, by the way, congratulations. Elizabeth just got married. <gasps> Yay. Yay! Congratulations! Finally, we were able to have the ceremony. You did it? Yes, finally. <laughs> After um, a hurricane, we finally did it. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, Elizabeth, welcome back to the show. We're so happy to have you. Thank you. For, I always love yeah, chatting with the you. The last guys. time Elizabeth was on, she was a, a variety correspondent. Now, she is CNN. CNN. And she has been doing a lot of coverage, working very hard to cover the P. Diddy situation. Is that what we're calling it? The P. Diddy situation? What is it like kind of, what, how do you, what do you guys refer to it at CNN, Elizabeth? The allegations oh. against okay. Sean Diddy Combs. Okay, see? Oh, that, there you that's go. A, that's Diddy a C, Combs. you know, I say the P. Diddy okay. situation. <laughs> CNN yeah, says he, the uh, allegations. Been, okay. Yeah, he has, he has not referred to himself as P. Diddy for some time. Okay. Um, but I think we all we all know what we're what you're talking gotcha. about when you say that. It's a crazy <laughs> story. There's so much like information and possibly misinformation going out around the internet that I wanted to bring you in someone who's actually covering it and trying to get the facts of the situation to help us like better understand what is going on. Last week his his homes, both I think in Miami and LA were raided. I don't know if it's other homes that were raided but rated by federal uh, FBI, was it, uh, some sort of federal law enforcement. His sons mm -hmm. were detained. There was conversations mm -hmm. about him possibly leaving the country. Then there was things about maybe he got arrested or not arrested. Now there's conversations about like, does this stop with P. Diddy or Sean Combs or whatever? Uh, I think there's speculation about other artists and rappers who have been loosely tied to Sean Diddy Combs over the years. And like, where does this go from here, Elizabeth? Okay, so first, I'm glad that you said that there's a lot of information and misinformation, because even with some of what you just said, some of that is incorrect. So oh, I'm going yeah. to politely, yeah. Um, yeah, we didn't know. politely correct you, which, you know, we uh, please don't take any offense to, but these are really serious allegations. So it's important that we get everything right. So um, there have been no arrests made and no one has been detained. Um, right now, where this stands is there are very, very serious allegations against uh, Diddy. There have been five lawsuits against him starting in November of 2023 and going up to a, a few weeks ago was the most recent one. Then, as you said, um, last Monday, so about a week ago, there were raids. There were searches on both of his homes in Los Angeles and in Miami. There have been no other raids on his other homes. Um, there were some rumors that there were going to be. At this point, there are um, no other raids. And we learned at CNN, while these searches were literally going on, that they were related to ongoing um, to an ongoing sex trafficking investigation. Now, that is per a law enforcement source from our correspondent, um, Josh Campbell, who some of your viewers may be familiar with his excellent work on CNN. And then as this continued to progress, we also learned that it was in fact Diddy, Sean Combs, who was the target of that federal investigation. Now that is per um, our John Miller at CNN. So at first, these raids were going on and they were at his homes, but officials um, were not and have not said that he was the target. Now we have learned though that he is. So now where this goes, um, the next step in this obviously is what are the findings of these searches, right? Uh, they obviously went in there looking for something. There have been allegations in all of these lawsuits um, relating to sexual assault, <laughs> drugging, human trafficking, sex trafficking, uh, you know, so they they went in there to look for something. And now I think we will have a clear view of what happens next when we know what the findings of those investigations are. Right. Like there is a scenario where they do find some evidence. We don't know what that is yet, but they you know, we hear that they were going in there to look at 
photographs, at um, computers, at, you know, different files. They're obviously looking for information. In some of these lawsuits, there were allegations that Diddy had cameras all over his home. Mm -hmm. Um, So that has been alleged in some of these complaints. So what do they find? If they find something that leads them to um, this rising to a criminal level, uh, then this could be prosecuted. If they find nothing, then this could all be a big nothing, but that still does not take away these allegations from these five very serious suits. And of course, we do have to point out that Diddy denies, denies, deny this and has since um, the first suit came in November. Wow. That's, uh, that was a lot. Was that too much? No, that's great. <laughs> I'm just digest. So I guess my first question that uh, while you're talking is, and I don't know if you had no an answer to this, but like, I got to assume that the the law enforcement, the feds, whoever the feds, you know, whatever agency it is, especially with a public figure of Sean Combs, like mm-hmm. usually do, do they not do this level of public raids if they don't think an arrest is imminent? You know what I'm saying? Because wouldn't it almost look bad on the feds to storm the castle, so to speak, only to be like, oh, actually, we... Turns out he's a pretty decent guy. We found out we didn't find it. You yes, know what I'm no, saying? I, it just it just seems like I, how yeah. Yeah, I totally hear what you're saying. I, you know, I don't think we can go so far to say they're doing this if it's going to lead to an imminent arrest. But yes, I think it is um, fair to say that they're not going in here looking for nothing, right? Mm-hmm. Like there again, there are very serious allegations in these complaints. The other thing that I want to point out, and Nick, you and I over the years when I've been a guest, we've talked about this. You know, I've covered a lot of stories throughout the Me Too movement. I fronted um, coverage for both Harvey Weinstein trials. I broke the allegations against Matt Lauer. Something that I have learned in my coverage of complaints of this nature is when there's a pattern of behavior that is established, that is something to take seriously. Now, that doesn't mean that because there is only one accuser or only one allegation that that allegation is false. It very much can be true. Um, but, you know, we've all heard the phrase, there's power in numbers. Mm-hmm. And when you have five different accusers, none of whom knew each other, um, all who are making accusations from different years, right? Some of these are from the 90s. Some of these are from, you know, as recent as a few years ago. And they're all making very similar and very serious accusations against Diddy. I would imagine that when the feds are looking into this, that that pattern could be alarming and could be concerning and could lead you to believe that there is something going on and something that has been going on for a number of years to different individuals. Now, as far as your reporting and is seen as concerned, again, another thing we're seeing a lot online is the connections between Sean Combs and other artists and, um, and speculation about like, is Sean Combs allegedly the next Jeffrey Epstein? Is that something that is just at this point internet conjecture and a bunch of rumors or 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 is that something you guys are looking into with any validity i mean look i think in this day and age um you know stories don't just unfold in the news there is immediate feedback of course on social media and like you said to start off this conversation there's a lot of rumors there's a lot of misinformation but i think you know the reason why people are making connections such as those is because they're similar allegations. Uh, Again, Diddy denies all of these allegations, but there are similar allegations that have stemmed from previous cases, Um, right? You know, in the Jeffrey Epstein case, we heard that there were allegedly cameras. Um, With Diddy, he has been accused of having cameras in his home. You know, there's allegations against Diddy of drugging women and drugging minors and drugging sex workers. We have seen similar allegations of drugging with, um, you know, previous powerful, famous men, um, such as Al Cosby. Um, You know, there's allegations that people lived with Diddy. We have seen previous allegations such as against R. Kelly, right? But he had people living with him. So I think people are drawing different connections to various former alleged accused men, but that doesn't mean that they are true. 
Um, you know, so what we are looking into right now with our reporting is, uh, you know, it is these accusations, which right now they do remain accusations. And this is an investigation just because someone is being investigated doesn't mean that they are guilty, you know, but I think you certainly have a point that when the, the feds are, are not, you know, going there because things are going well, right? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's pretty obvious. Um, um, to say, but I do, if you don't mind, just because this is really important, I'm pulling up um, a statement right now, if you don't mind, Please. because I don't know if you've read the statement to your listeners yet, but I'm going through all my papers. Okay, here we go. So we did obtain a statement from Diddy's attorney. We were um, the first with this statement at CNN, and it's important to read it in full. Because as we're talking about, you know, there's so many allegations and so much to talk about, and everybody's drawing their own conclusions. And the fact of the matter is, is right now, there's an investigation. And there's allegations that the target, Diddy, denies. So here is his statement from his attorney, Aaron Dyer. He tells us it's CNN, quote, and this is the day after the raids. He tells us yesterday there was a gross overuse of military level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs' residences. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Mr. Combs was never detained, but spoke to and cooperated with authorities. Despite media speculation, neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested, nor has their ability to travel been restricted in any way. This unprecedented ambush paired with an advanced coordinated media presence leads to a premature rush judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. There has been no finding or criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. So I think, you know, just in there, you hear what Diddy's side uh, believes. Now, I also spoke to um, some people in Diddy's inner circle. And I hear that they were completely shocked, um, that they were completely caught off guard by these raids. They were shocked at the scope of the raids. And at the time that his Los Angeles home and Miami home was being raided, he was on his way out of Miami to go on a vacation with his twin teenage daughters. And that's when this all happened. So, you know, there was also a lot of media speculation mm. of, is he trying to flee the country? Um, you know, what's going on? Where is he? And I hear that he was going on a pre-planned vacation for spring break with his girls. There was one of his private planes that did leave the country, registered in his name. But we hear at CNN um, that Diddy was not on that plane. And now that plane is back in the country. So gotcha. that was another big media rumor that maybe yeah. I can clear up a bit. Thanks for clearing that up. Yeah. There was also a video that resurfaced um, of a young girl in the video and Sean Combs saying that he has adopted her. And mm -hmm. then there was like, oh, there was actually a missing persons report for this young girl. What do y'all make of that? I have seen that video. Um, that is not something that I personally have looked into and that is not something that has come up in any of the complaints yet i do think you know there's a lot of past videos coming up right i'm sure we've all seen yeah. the video with justin bieber and the video with usher and there's a there's an interview with usher from 2016 he's talking to howard stern and howard stern is asking about him living with diddy uh, when he was 13, 14 years old. And, you know, 2016 is a year before the Me Too movement. So this is going through the lens of a pre Me Too uh, environment before Hollywood certainly was really looking at these behaviors from powerful men who often got away with many mis misdeeds. Um, now people are looking at that video and saying, why was Usher living with Diddy at 13, 14 years old? You know, that seems. A little strange. We have not heard from Usher. And uh, again, you know, Diddy is one of the people who discovered Usher. Um, so there could be a reason, you know, that he was with him. But yeah, there's a lot of videos that are being looked at again. I do want to point out also when I just brought up Usher, because he's one of the people that Diddy helped with his career. You know, I said this on air, and I think something that is a telltale sign that we should take very seriously 
Diddy is responsible for launching the career of Mary J. Blige or Usher. Um, Biggie, who obviously is no longer here, but he's responsible for launching the careers of mega massive stars. And even if he wasn't responsible in launching their careers, he's friends with them, right? Like it's Diddy. He knows everyone. He He's had a you know a career over three decades. He just won the Global Icon Award at the VMAs last year. Not one person has come out to defend him. Mm. So I think that's a very a strong sign, something that we should look at. He has friends in high places. He has friends all over, you know, Hollywood. He's a mogul. He has friends in tech. He has friends in the business world, the finance world. Not one person is speaking out about him. And there are also a few celebrities who I don't want to call out right now, but a few celebrities who deleted photos with Diddy that was on their social media right when the first lawsuit from Cassie, his ex, came out. So he's getting no Hollywood support, no support from his famous friends. And that's something that's different than what we've seen with previous people who have been accused. Yeah. Yeah. Even people who have been rightfully accused have gotten support yeah. mm-hmm. uh, from some of their peers. And uh, he is not. Yeah. I'm always like you mentioned R. Kelly. One thing it just always blows my mind when I think about I just I'm old enough to remember that when I was like in middle school and high school, it was like the worst kept secret that R. Kelly was a predator and was involved with young women and children, the whole alea of it all. And it was like no one did anything about it. You know, for mm-hmm. years it was just something that everyone knew, everyone talked about. R. Kelly was a pedophile. He was a child predator. And I would always remember being in high school confused. It was like, how is this guy still dropping new songs when we all know that he is a monster? Mm -hmm. And it just finally one day, it seemed like the government decided to care, but Mm -hmm. everyone knew about it for years. And it just, it's always so bizarre to me. And we do know that Sean Combs and R. Kelly and other artists out there were were in very tight circles around that time. So, you know, we know where R. Kelly is these days. Whether that's a coincidence or not, I, I don't know. Mm. But I think it's wild. I, I go, I every I just I'm always remind every time R. Kelly's name gets dropped, I'm always just like jaw on the floor, just shocked how how long people knew who he was and like everyone just looked the other way for so many years. It's so crazy to me. I I mean, look, you know, Hollywood is, um, is inherently a business about the bottom line, right? So if someone is making a lot of money and if they have a lot of power, historically people have looked the other way. And that is why the Me Too movement was such a game changer for not just Hollywood, not just the entertainment business, but really for society. You know, it impacted restaurant workers. It impacted so many different people. But it was finally, you know, this time where people can speak up. And again, when you speak up, it's an allegation. It doesn't mean it's true. But we've obviously, you know, you use our telly as an example. We've seen enough situations where where these things are true um, at a criminal level. You know, R. Kelly is in prison. Harvey Weinstein is in prison. Um, Bill Cosby was in prison. He got off based on a technicality, not on anything that had to do with the allegations against him. So I I think what we're seeing, and there's still a lot more work to be done, um, but I think what we're seeing is a culture that has changed where it's not so easy to act the way that you want to act and to act criminally in many cases, or at least act with bad behavior just because you're powerful. Because now people will speak up, but you know, with R. Kelly, the lid wasn't really blown off on that until Lifetime's docuseries, mm-hmm. Surviving yeah. R. Kelly. And it was when these allegations came forward that then we saw a domino effect. And that's why I brought up this pattern of behavior. Because with Diddy, he was first accused by Cassie in a lawsuit in November of 2023. Within a few days, uh, we had two more accusers. And then within a few months, we have five accusers and five lawsuits. So it's this domino effect that we have seen. And again, that is something to pay very close attention to. And you look, you know, I have one of the complaints in front of me. So the most recent complaint um, was from a male former producer Mm -hmm. of Diddy's. And he worked with him on his love album. He, you know, some of the more minor offenses, um, allegations in this complaint are that he wasn't paid properly. But then the more serious offenses I'm looking through, he's accusing Diddy of 
sexual assault, grooming, um, grooming him into having sex with another man, forcing him to procure sex workers, forcing him to watch pornographic videos, alleging that Diddy served alcoholic beverages that were laced with drugs uh, to minors and sex workers. He spoke about sex trafficking parties. Uh, He said Diddy was forceful and demanding and displayed his gun, so he felt intimidated. Here's a quote. Um, It's graphic but I'm going to read it. A quote from that complaint says, throughout his time living with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones, Rodney Jones is the accuser, was the victim of constant unsolicited and unauthorized groping and touching of his anus. So there are like very serious allegations. Then you look at Cassie's lawsuit from November. She accuses him of sex trafficking, human trafficking, sexual battery, assault, controlling behavior, and a decade of abuse since the age of 19. Um, you know, they were together for a very long time. And she says that throughout that entire relationship that she was in this cycle of abuse by Diddy. So these are very, very serious allegations. And again, you know, started this domino effect. So to your point, Nick, you know, there's always rumors. And why does it take so long? Um, You know, people are scared, even how many years after the Me Too movement, they're very scared to come forward against powerful people that they know are capable of career yeah. retaliation and he's one of the most um, powerful and, yeah in hollywood right, could be capable of worse yeah wow this is and, and i'm assuming we're just expecting more to be uncovered like where do we think we're at in this story like how fast do you think the government is going to move with their investigation i think there's a lot more to come from this story i think this is the i i think i don't want to say this is the tip of the iceberg because it could right? Like nothing could come from it. But I think if he has cameras in his home, which he is alleged to have, there could be a lot of evidence there. There could be nothing, but there could be a lot of evidence there. Uh, We also know that Diddy infamously threw big Hollywood parties, you know, what other celebrities are going to pop up um, in any evidence that they find. Now, that doesn't mean that those celebrities will be accused of wrongdoing themselves, you know, just because you were at a party at Diddy's house doesn't mean that you were engaged in any alleged bad behavior. But Diddy knew a lot of famous people and they were often at his house. So if there is, which we don't know if there is, if there is footage, if there is evidence, there can be a lot to come out. Now, the other thing that, you know, we're looking out for, of course, there could potentially be more accusers. Right now we have five lawsuits against him. Um, but there could be more. So I think that's another thing to look out for. It's not yeah. just what they'll find from these raids. It's are there more people that will come forward? The more safe people feel about coming forward, the more will come forward if there are other victims out there. I can understand why it would still be very scary for alleged other victims to come forward against him. Absolutely. And, you know, you have the the investigation side of it, but then you also have the career um, side of things. Diddy, right? Like Diddy is in truly in that one percent of the entertainment business where he is his own boss, and he doesn't need more money. He doesn't need anyone to help him. He calls the shots. However, let's say that this investigation goes nowhere. You still have these allegations that have come out against him, and he is denying them. I expect that he will continue to deny him based on uh, the statement that we have from him and his lawyers, but those allegations don't go away. So I think the future for Diddy is very different at the very least, right? Like, because you brought up prison time with, with R. Kelly, you know, and we don't know if that's even in the realm of possibility. Um, you know, it depends what happens with this investigation. But even if that is off the table, things don't look the same for Diddy after this all happens. Um, because, you know, once the lid is blown off and these allegations come out, you know, it's up to the public what they believe. Um, largely, these are he said, she said cases. If there's camera footage and evidence, it doesn't become a he said, she said. There might actually be some tangible evidence there. Um, but, you know, I, I think that the career fallout is is a very real thing, regardless of what happens yeah. with this investigation. Well, these uh, alleged cameras and and the potential parties and all the celebrities that have allegedly potentially gone there and could be on video will be fascinating mm. if it if there's truth to those allegations. Um, can I ask 
TMZ reported that a s- alleged drug mule was arrested at the Miami airport like the day of the raids. Um, is that true? Do you have any confirmation on that or if it's related? Yes. So not yes, that it's related, but yes, I can <laughs> elaborate further on that. So we um, also reported that um, it's one of Diddy's associates and in the lawsuit from this male music producer, Rodney Jones. He alleges that this associate, um, his name is Brendan, that he was a, quote, drug mule of Diddy's. Now, Team Diddy is denying that, but this man was arrested the day of the raids on his Los Angeles and Miami homes. They were at a Miami airport. There are photos of Diddy with um, Brendan, and Brendan was arrested. He was eventually released, but he was um, arrested for having drugs on him but they have denied that he was diddy's drug meal the allegations in the lawsuit are that he was his drug meal and also helped um obtain guns firearms for him but they have denied that but yes he was arrested okay wow well well elizabeth i can't thank you enough for you know providing accurate information there's obviously so much more to potentially uncover but i'm glad we we got the information right directly from someone with your qualifications. So we really appreciate you taking the time uh, and giving us a scoop on the latest of what's going on with uh, Sean Diddy Combs. Thank you. Of course. And this story is not going anywhere. So we will continue to be reporting on it in any developments. You let me know what you need. Well, well, obviously, always honored to have you on, Elizabeth. Can't wait to have you on again, whether it's talking about this case or I'm sure other uh, more, well, other cases in Hollywood. Elizabeth's always doing the best uh, with uh, all the biggest scoops in Hollywood. So thanks for taking your time. Thanks for taking the time, Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Neutrafol. Neutrafol. I couldn't. Take it every night. I, could, I, I take it every <laughs> single every night. night. I Nick, cannot... you grab my Neutrophil pills. Is that what I sound like? Yeah, baby, what? it's my baby. Can you grab my Neutrophil? Okay, baby. yeah, yes, that is that is exactly what I say because you know what? I take it every single day. Neutrophil, I am obsessed with. I love this brand. I took them before I got pregnant. My hair was in the best state it had ever possibly been in in my life. Then I got pregnant, and I honestly looked forward to being able to take them again once I gave birth to keep up with postpartum hair issues. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement with over 1 million people seeing thicker, stronger, faster growing hair with less shedding. That is me. I am part of that 1 million people. Before I took Nutrafol, I had so much hair coming out in the shower. Like I made, I made pictures. I made designs on the shower wall. Nick hated every second of it. But now... I can't do that. Not with Nutrafol. No, no, no. While many supplements rely solely on ingredient studies, Nutrafol clinically tests final formulations to ensure their efficiency. In a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth after taking Nutrafol's women hair growth supplement for six months. That is the thing about Nutrafol. Consistency is key. This Mother's Day, share the gift of growth with a special woman in your life. Whether it's your mother, aunt, or friend, Nutrafol is a unique and thoughtful gift with a lasting impact. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter promo code THEVIOFILES. Find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and hairstylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code THEVIOFILES. That's Nutrafol.com, the promo code THEVIOFILES. Skims. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Skims. Skims. Iconic. Skims is the best. It's and the I best. feel like Natalie knows that and many people know that because they have bras for literally any type of shirt, whether it's like I have some halter top ones and I have a bralette that works perfectly with like a racer back. I have a nice little push up situation going on right now. I also would like to mention I got my dress for Nick and Natalie's wedding and I said to myself, I need shapewear that is here on the top and has spaghetti straps and has a super low back to accommodate mm. for my dress. Mm, and Could where did you find it, it? Guess who had it? Skims. <laughs> of course. Uh, the Fits Everybody collection is one of the best 
collections of clothing I think I've ever put on my body in my life. Because it's so inclusive. It fits everybody. It's so inclusive. It's so flattering. I mean, y'all know I wear a black t-shirt on this podcast probably every time I'm recording. And it is Skims fits everybody black t-shirt. Oh, I got a new pair of, uh, I got got a sweatsuit from Skims yesterday. You did. It's so cute. Their underwear for men is top notch. Durable, great material, breathable. You really feel like you're (sighs) keeping it all tight. But breathable, tight and loose, you know what I'm saying? Skims bras are worth the hype for the amazing shape and support they give, especially after giving birth and breastfeeding. I feel like I need all of the support I can get, and I am getting that with Skims wireless form t-shirt bra, even the underwire bras. I'm wearing them all day, and I barely even notice that it's an underwire bra, and it's definitely not the first thing I take off when I get home. Shop Skims Bras at skims.com, now available in 62 sizes, from a 30A to a 46H. If you haven't yet, be sure to let them know we sent you after you place your order, select podcast in the survey and select our show in the drop-down menu that follows. All right, well, thanks again to Elizabeth for uh, all the factual tea. That's so exciting, having like a real CNN correspondent. It's like a real show these days. That's like very real. We're doing very real things here. Very real things. I'm impressed. Yeah. Yeah. Natalie had to go. She she had uh, a workout appointment. Okay. So we're, listen, as a family, we just, we're just making it work. We're here. Yeah. We're just making it work. She had to go. She said it's goodbye, but she she peaced out uh, during uh, Elizabeth's appearance. So um, (laughs) she said goodbye. She didn't want to, she she didn't want to interrupt Elizabeth. Like a goodbye. She just never wants to say goodbye. That's, you know, she loves you guys so much. She was like, let's see you again. Well, it's like Natalie loves being here and we all know that everyone loves Natalie. So we're giving, we're, we're trying to give Natalie to the people yeah. despite <laughs> her being a mom. Booked and, and busy. Have, booked, booked and busy. You know? And getting, re- re- getting ready for a wedding and yeah. motherhood. A lot going on. We're, it's a lot. We're just trying to feed our family, you know? <laughs> we're trying to make ends meet. Anyway. <laughs> I was like, with the great ass. Uh, yeah, she does. Yeah. Oh, but Tyler Cameron did text me back. Oh. I text Tyler Cameron, is his OnlyFans real or is this April Fool's? Tyler wrote, it's real, but for promo. So you're not seeing the, the, the saucy stuff you came well, for. Well, I Harvey. said my response to it's real, but for promo, because he does have a new show coming out. Mm-hmm. You know, I just wrote, so are you naked or not? <laughs> Get to the point. <laughs> what the people want to know. said. Technically, yes. Oh. LOL. And I said, love. What does that mean? Technically, yes. It means you better subscribe, subscribe and find, find out. out. Yeah. I mean, I will. You're like, so, I technically love that. Thank yeah. you so yeah. much. <laughs> it sounds like a black box situation, but we might get like a couple like pubes, like, you know, like how Just close. Just what I signed up for. Like how big is the black box? You know, like, uh, you know. Some HGTV oh, pubes. Like, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, make sure to follow our dear friend Elizabeth Wagmeister at uh, E Wagmeister on all socials. She's great. She, we love Elizabeth. She just gives us a little bit of legitimacy that we uh, aspire to have. I liked it. That was, that was real. Back to reality television. Okay. <laughs> Back to uh, the Valley. Uh, hockey Bro. That was Hockey Bro episode. Jesse. It's rare that you find somebody that makes you question, like, do I like Jax? No. No, does I'm he, telling does you, it I mean, make you li- why? no, not that I like Jax. I'm saying like more so because like I didn't think that somebody could be more unlikable on reality TV than Jax. But like every time Jesse opens his mouth for me, it's mm, I'm not giving Jax credit. I'm no, not saying I, I, no, I like I Jax. I I'm just you. saying it's like one of those things where you're just like, how are you zine stealing with being awful? Because mm. that's like been Jax's platform. So mm-hmm. we just kind of leave him there where I'm like, uh. but Jax had his moments this episode too. What Jax Taylor has proven is that. Being on a TV show with Jax Taylor is not good for your mental health. Mm-mm. No. He will say anything about you or your past. He basically slut-shamed Kristen Doty. Yes. Not even basically. Fully. Full, Full on. on. Full on. I've slept with her. Everyone slept with her. To sleep. With... It's like, holy shit, Jax. So Jesus incredibly rude. Christ. Also, the setting up, yeah, the ex-boyfriend that clearly did not end on good terms to meet her current boyfriend in hopes that they'll have a conversation. At least. What was your intention besides pure evil there, Jax? No, his intention is for He's Alex is the ex, right? Yeah. For Alex to talk Luke out of dating Kristen. A thousand percent. That's Jax's goal and seems to be his goal for the foreseeable future. Like every boyfriend Kristen has, is Jax going to do this? Well, mm-hmm. Why is why does Kristen fuck with them? I don't understand. I think she loves Brittany. Thank God they're 
go in their separate ways, but I feel like it's kind of like the the women stick together mm-hmm. and kind of accept the fact. Cause she said that about Jesse too. She was like, I'm only near Jesse because I love his wife, mm-hmm. not by choice. She doesn't even know him that well. Has Jesse not figured out or or men in general, <laughs> middle aged men? Yep. Like if you're being v- recorded um, and you have an opportunity to uh, show your talents in something you were good at in high school, calm down on the enthusiasm. <laughs> you know, because like when Jesse put on the rollerblades and started playing roller hockey, he was truly in his element. And you like everything I wondered or needed to know about Jesse was answered in that moment. It's like, oh, he's a hockey bro who like was really good at hockey in high school. Absolutely. And he's he's put on the skates a few times since then, and he is literally rolling circles around these guys who don't care yeah. about hockey. <laughs> One can't even skate. Weren't yeah. <laughs> good in high school, weren't even athletic, and he is so proud of himself. It's like he is really good at doing it, and it really shows. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it's his whole personality truly <laughs> they're playing hockey too yeah exactly and then critiquing the people it's like if you want to get put wheel like do what i put on some roller skates i've i've witnessed that on that and episode. like that comes with its own inherent criticism being a middle-aged man good at <laughs> roller skating not like the guy who's playing hockey who is like yeah i used to be the star athlete in high school you know it's like everything it's just i just couldn't imagine Wanting to go on a TV show and just be like, I'm the deadbeat dad. I just, I don't understand. Is that still fun to like joke about, to be a loser dad? I I never knew it was fun to joke about in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. I thought it's like. uh, It's a trope that I think if you're in it, you think it's okay, but really it's never okay. Or it's like the like villain thing where it's like you don't see yourself how everybody else sees you Mm -hmm. kind of situation. Yeah, I don't understand his motivation coming on this show. Like, what did you want your character to be? It's his like first line in the in the episode where he was like somebody told him that he, once he realized or accepted the fact he was a douchebag, he became more charming. And I said this earlier, but I was like, that is to me, one person said that to you and excused your whole behavior. And you just held on mm-hmm. to that and was like, oh, people find this charming mm-hmm. because on a grand scale. No, absolutely. Do you want to help your wife with your kid? No. Nipple twisting at a party. No. Oh my God. The nipple twisting. Oh, my. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. The sexual assault. Yeah. And he claims that I don't remember doing that. That's not really like my thing. Like, gosh, I, ho- I should hope so. The fact that he had to, he quickly was like, I can't deny it. I don't remember doing it. Mm-hmm. Guilty. You have a problem. And I gave uh, mad respect to Luke for mm-hmm. standing up for his lady and being like, it doesn't matter if you think she said it happened. So therefore it's fact. And I'm like, I appreciate that. Yeah. The difference between Jax's reaction to that and Luke's reaction to that was like night and day. Jax was like, oh, ha ha. And, and Luke Do you was think like, you did it? yeah. And Luke was like, Look, so serious. Jax. Like, um, absolutely not okay. Jax just thinks it's all show fodder. Yeah. You know, he's like, oh man, like what a great storyline. But do you feel like anyone else on the Valley that's new isn't feeling that way? Like they're actually being more authentic, which is kind of scarier. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Totally. Like if they're coming into it and they're like, don't know how it works and don't know how to like kind of queue up with the producers. If they're actually like twisting nips, they're like, this is what I like to do versus like, no, it's alarming. I don't, I don't, I don't under. Yeah. And again, like, I have done reality TV, but there is a reason why I haven't been back on. Yeah. You know, because like, I don't want to have to do things for the sake of doing things. And I just don't care that much about being good TV. Mm -hmm. Also, like Jesse and Michelle, like they have since filed for divorce. If there is a season two of The Valley, and I suspect there may be because Mm -hmm. it seems to be doing well. Mm -hmm. Does he have a place on the show? Like, I know he's a bit of a drama starter, but like, is anyone interested in watching? Single Jesse hanging out with single Jacks, not me. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, I don't know what the evolution of it's going to be. At the same time, I didn't know what the actual premise of the show was going to be. Mm-hmm. So that's where I'm like, eh, there is room for it to turn into something else. Being that all of these couples are separating, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't want to watch single Jesse and Jacks venture around West Hollywood picking up girls. Yeah, Mm-mm. you know, Jasmine Good made an appearance from my season of The Bachelor. She's on there. She's a friend of. She's a main friend. Yeah, oh. friend of. Yeah, I've gotten to know Jasmine a couple. Th- it's it's always like, Jasmine famously choked me on my season <laughs> of The Bachelor, which then Natalie started asking because Natalie never, hasn't seen my season, right. and she's like, "Weren't you also punched in the face?" And then she's like, "Oh, oh, weren't didn't you also X, Y, or Z?" I don't even feel comfortable enough saying. <laughs> 
But I was like, yeah, no, that actually is all true. And then when I think about it in context, I was put in a lot of uncomfy situations <laughs> because that's the thing about being the bachelor or just a lead of any kind. It's just like specifically Corinne, who, again, I thought is a, she's a star. And I, don't, mm-hmm. I think we, we forget, we, we don't recognize uh, Corinne's star as much as we should these days. But that being said, I always had a choice between any of these women who were willing to take a risk, appropriate or not appropriate, you know, putting themselves out there, punching me in the face, <laughs> choking me, whatever. Wow. Um, I had to decide whether I should speak up and say I'm not comfortable or embarrass them. And I always chose the f- not to speak up. <laughs> I just kind of went with it and felt uncomfy throughout the entire experience experience yeah. because mm-hmm. saying i'm not you know comfortable right now in front of them and a bunch of cameras and and women is that like i i didn't want to do that i wanted to like take it one for the team so to speak which is always weird when you think about it in those contexts that being said i actually have gotten to know jasmine a couple times i've only ran i've ran her a couple times uh, since the show and it's it's, it's fascinating when you know, because as the bachelor, the stakes are raised. Like you're, you're literally are there because you're like you're hoping you meet someone because the expectation you are getting engaged. So like you, you see these women differently, and when you come out of the show and you meet them in the wild, so to speak, and the stakes aren't there anymore, you're kind of like, oh, yeah, you kind of a, you're cool, you're, you're yeah, cool, yeah, yeah. you're chill. That's how I always felt about Jasmine. Like when she was choking me on the season, <laughs> I was a little perturbed. Um, outside of the show, I was like, yeah, you're, you're cool. fine, you're a cool hang. So I wish Jasmine nothing <laughs> but the best. Cool hang. Anything else on the valley? Just that uh, Brittany, how Brittany gave the information to Kristen about Alex being there. Where I'm a just glad that she doesn't have to fight Jax's battles anymore. But it's also like as a friend, I don't know how you would take bring that to your friend saying hey my husband invited your ex i hope you're okay with it and not like a heads up it's it's happening right now mm, yeah i'm always trying to figure out what is real and what these people are doing for tv it also just feels like they're all always in fight or flight because mm-hmm. at any point someone could be like and i'm bringing this person over or i've just told this secret like there's no like homeostasis relaxation of the nervous system because you're just like, no, yeah. it's like okay. being at camp and people like doing a prank war. Like, I feel like everyone's just like going to do it on you. Like, yeah. I'm shocked Kristen's back on the show. It's it, weird. It that cannot be good for her mental health. Well, so it's, it's weird to me when people put longevity of friendship over quality of friendship, mm-hmm. where even what Luke said in the show, he's like, I don't think a friend would put you in an uncomfortable situation on purpose and see how you react to it. But it's like, these people have all done terrible things to each other with each other in normal life. You would separate yourself and never see these people again. But because of the want of being on television or whatever it is, you're willing to subject yourself to this level of toxicity and friendships because these aren't real friends. I heard that Jax went around like asking anyone who kind of he kind of knew if they wanted to be on the show. Yeah, I believe that. Like, mm-hmm. after watching the show and the chemistry of the cast. Yeah, like some of the Valley friendships that reek of the New York Housewives part two. It's like, you guys are just, you guys are hanging out for the first time. It's Jax excusing him inviting Alex because he's, like, part of the guy group and then him talking to Danny and, like, Jesse being like, so Alex is gonna come. He dated Kristen. Like, right. you it's guys like, you don't, don't hang know out. each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're no, not he has friend. no purpose in being here. Yeah, and no. then Brittany's saying that Alex deserved to be there more than Luke. And it's like, what? what? As, if this guy was as bad to Kristen as, like, she say, I mean, I don't know their history, but, like, why are you all still friends with him? What Jax thinks is bad is yeah. not the I love the line where Jax was like, I fucked up, didn't I? It's like, <laughs> everybody told you not to do it. You did it anyway. <laughs> like Jax likes to hold on to like emotional blackmail. Mm-hmm. Like it's like, he's like, mm, I know that this is going to bother her. So let me put that in the pocket and never lose their number just in case. That's what it feels like. He's morally bankrupt. Yeah, a thousand percent. It's like a sociopathic energy. A thousand percent. Where they like, don't have that same response to human. Yeah, that's what he do- I don't think he understands yeah. good or bad. He no. just uh, understands he attention thinks- that he is getting or not getting. He thinks he did good when there's a big reaction yes. to yes. whatever, mm-hmm. whether it's positive or negative. He's like, okay, I did my job. And it's like, uh, read between the lines. It seems like he just wants this to be a juicy show yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so he'll stir up whatever he drama he needs mm-hmm. to uh kyle richards is commenting on Anne marie's exit from real housewives what did she have to say she said i always feel bad when somebody comes in and doesn't have a great experience on the show she didn't get to show all aspects of her life on the show so you know it's hard i feel bad and you know she's great and she has 
a great family. It is what it is. She has a beautiful family, so she will be fine. That great family part's a little messy. Is that like her throwing herself under the bus? Like being like, well, I may be on Housewives, but she has a great family, so. Well, it's just like with everything going on with her husband. It's, yeah. It didn't seem great. I don't know. Listen, being a great TV maker and being a great person, two very different things. 100%. And uh, I never met Anne-Marie. Maybe she is a fantastic person. She just wasn't a great housewife. It's fine. Fair. I'd, I'd rather be a better person than better at TV. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wish all, the person Anne-Marie, nothing but the best. But I'm glad the housewife Anne-Marie is off my TV screen. Yep. Speak. You know? Touche. Yeah. Speak. That's all I, I got to say. Speaking of housewives, New York officially announced their upcoming cast. Is Luann part of it? She updated her bio. Is that, or is that, was that a preemptive April Fool's joke? Was that, was that Luann confusing, you know, March 29th with uh, April 1st? She's like, March, I, you're missing two days of March. <laughs> I don't know. But she updated her bio. Are you a couple, tired? She updated her bio a couple days ago. Is she on it? No. They say, all castmates from season 14 of Real Housewives of New York will return for the new season. Jenna Lyons was originally rumored not to return, but she is. So Duane is not on it. Doesn't seem Does it, Is that it still way. in her bio? It is. But she also is an OG of Real Housewives of New York, so... So she's just saying. I think she's just listening. I was athletes. and I have always been mm-hmm. like every. Uh, yeah, Roni. Yeah, she put crappy like underneath <laughs> but it. But that yeah. would be like you having your bio, The Bachelor, a Bachelor alum. Season. I would sadly and embarrassingly, most of my peers do have their. But they put the season number. Some of them do. Some of them don't. Oh. Well. Even then, I've, I've well, never... is that a better or worse? Yeah. <laughs> they do the season number. <laughs> if you I've never done me. that. I don't. I just. I've never understood why. What does your bio say? Well, I mean, it's not much. I mean, it wow. says Harry Styles fan account says tall mm. on a person. Taller it's a bit outdated. Person. I could update it. Like it's a bit. It's never said former bachelor or bachelor. Ever. I added vile files to my bio. Am I a loser? I did too. No. <laughs> no, that's a real job. Okay. Yeah, we're doing things you should be proud of here. Okay. You know, like being the. I fell in love on TV. That's I don't on Bachelor know. 2015. Okay. I'm just not one for putting uh, the bat like because it, it it gets so outdated so fast. You yeah. know, when you're first on it, and then like. Six months go by and you're the third most recent season. It's like, eh. I like if it's time it's, to take it down. It's like Bachelor, Bachelor in Paradise. Yeah, some of them have them all. I have all of them. Yeah. Have yeah. Every <laughs> guest appearance and Bachelorette season. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Gypsy Rose and Ryan. The D is no oh, longer wow. fire. Yeah. Sad. I got, obviously, a lot of you all have asked uh, me, us, what we think about that. I'm sad. I have kept in touch with Ryan. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when we interviewed them, we exchanged numbers and it was kind of like, hey, man, if I can ever offer any advice or help, he has reached out for some advice, mostly like, and it was always advice for him and Gypsy, a lot to do with how to handle social media. She turned off her social media accounts a couple of weeks ago. You know, there's stuff like that. I, I, I haven't really kept that much in touch and we don't like I mean, when when Natalie and I had River, he did message me like a very nice congratulations and mentioned how like. I think him and Gypsy were hoping and trying to have children. So mm. I, I don't listen, like they the odds were stacked against him. Yeah. You know? Like they were you know, people are like, Oh, did you think they did you see this coming? I don't I mean, their relationship was always gonna be a challenge. Mm-hmm. You could argue that Gypsy, again, is living life for the first time ever. Everything is new to her. She went from being a prisoner of her abusive mother to be literally in prison. Mm -hmm. And now as a young 30 year old woman, she is experiencing most things for the first time. And she is figuring herself out. Mm -hmm. And like, yes, she did a a terrible thing. But like, I don't know, I have a lot of empathy for what she went through. Most of us can't put ourselves in her shoes and know what it's like to be her. But when I met them, they seemed Sin- as sincere as any other couple. Yeah. yeah so like for like, oh, you saw that coming. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Congratulations. You, you saw a, re- it's like saying I saw a batch relationship breakup coming. Mm-hmm. No shit. This shit. Like if Joey and Kelsey break up, which if you haven't been able to listen to that episode, go back and check it out as last week's going deeper. But like sitting with Joey and Kelsey, honestly, I'm a believer. Mm-hmm. I think they could make it. They're doing the work. They, they, there seems to be a real connection there. Mm-hmm. Will they make it? I mean, if I had to bet today, like odds are they're not going to, you know, because odds are every relationship that starts anywhere is hard enough, especially Mm -hmm. in 2024. Add to it the public figure aspect, add to it the fact that they have all this unnecessary pressure that they have to deal with that every other relationship doesn't deal with. It's one thing for, you know, Nick, the old bachelor to be like, hey guys, stay off Reddit, stay off the internet, (laughs) and if I can give you any advice, and them to actually do that because it's easier said than done. 
Same thing with Gypsy and Ryan. It's like, who the fuck knows? We, have, we can't understand what it's been like to go through what they're going through. So I'm sad that they uh, ended it. And then I, I get, you know, to people like, oh, we saw that coming. It's like, ah, oh, fuck off. You know, like. Uh, you feel good about that? <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, my hope for them is that, like, it doesn't get messy. Mm. That it's just more like, eh, we tried and. A clean move through. It's just like, and again, it would, wouldn't shock me if Gypsy. Uh, over the next couple years, uh, tries and fails at a lot of like just personal identity. Who mm -hmm, is she? Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. who am I? What am I about? What do, what do I want to be? You know, she is trying to forgive herself for what happened. Mm -hmm. She is trying to get acceptance from the public. She has literally what twenty million followers over across platforms, and she's not a like she's not a celebrity. A lot of people are following her out of like. They want to see like what the could fascination happen. Yeah. they're rooting mm -hmm. against yeah. her, and like she doesn't probably even comprehend that because yeah. I didn't comprehend what it why certain people were following me. They're not all fans. Hate and love are synonymous. Know? Um, it's shit like that. So it's just a fucking it's a lot. Um, yeah. and so my my heart goes out to both of them, and I hope they're doing okay. And is, um, are they off social right now? As, I haven't a, looked. A I know that she airing? was. Uh, well, I, think, I don't know if he was. Well, I hope so because that I would be so. really important to try to be. Yeah, it's kind of hilarious that she did announce it. Like she took, she turned out of her TikTok and Instagram, but like announced it on Facebook, like a, like a true millennial woman. Yeah, you know? <laughs> like a normal person. This is like a normal person. Just like, yeah. a, like, yeah. hey neighborhood, this is what's going on. <laughs> hey, just saying hi to the family instead of the group text. I'm just kind of announcing it, to the fam through a Facebook post. Wow, uh, Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, other than that, I just I hope they're gonna I hope they're doing okay. You know, obviously, if Gypsy yeah. wants to come on the show and talk about it, you are welcome. Mm -hmm. yeah. We shall see. We shall. But we wish them the best. Mm -hmm. Wish the best. We certainly do. Yeah. Do you think Lizzo is gonna come back to music? Yeah. Apparently, Lizzo quit yesterday. I think she'll be yeah. back online by Friday. <laughs> yeah. I think she's gonna come back. I mean, she's too talented not to. Yeah. I I I her her what she was quitting was vague. Mm. I wasn't sure if it was social media or just the music industry in general altogether. Yeah, um, it, it could have just been like I quit. I quit like dealing with haters. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's kind of the vibe I got. I do always get a kick out of the public figure announcing they're quitting social media online. You know, like you just you can just do just it. Stop posting. You just, just stop posting. You just, you just take a break. <laughs> Take a little pause. Yeah. I, I quit every two it. weeks. I feel like I feel like <laughs> they're the, always back on three days later. I feel like they do it for like some accountability because it's like if you didn't tell anyone you were pausing, you could like go off and go back on like pretty quickly. Where you know if the world's watching, like oh, or you know how long are they going to take? I don't know. I feel like maybe it's like a fail safe, right? A little yeah. bit, you know. Yeah. yeah. I'm also like, is it also like the these come back? You know what I mean? Like yes, make yes, them yes. think about how they've treated we're her. How we treated yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. Which is, you know, we're off the heels of that speculation that Lizzo wasn't treating people so Very well. Very kind, so that yeah. Kind of, that, that kind of, who knows where that went. I don't know. Right. Another day, another headline. I don't know. Tula, do you mind if we ask how, how are things with your fam? Fam is great. I am I'm a aunt. I'm doing mm. auntie life. Yeah. Uh, my aunt, thank you. My auntie name is Auntie Whimsy. Love. Love. My mom's name, uh, her grandma name is Yaya. And Scout, my sister's name uh, is Auntie Lala. Those are they're very important names, so we all feel very excited about. Okay. Um, well. I think that I'm I'm more excited than anything because she Luetta, she now recognizes me. Like I can see in her face, like when I, even on Facetime, I'll Facetime Rumor and her, and she goes from like kind of like still to like a full baby smile. Oh. Um, it's. It's amazing. It's also giving me like crazy baby fever. And then you guys with the cute baby and it's like everyone in my kind of realm, I feel like is at that point of this is the next step in your life, mm -hmm. um, which I'm so here for. I feel like it's a great anything. I just turned 30 like a month ago and I'm thrilled. I feel like 30 is the best thing that ever happened to me. Like you just I don't know how old you guys are. But I agree. 30s amazing. I enjoyed my 30s. I yeah. love the 30s because I know who I, I mean this is probably like so oversaid but like I know who I am mm -hmm. and I also feel like I can just gather all that information and with like less self-judgment and more self-love be able to just like make the right decisions in each moment versus 20s I was like I am a oh, just a naked baby <laughs> flailing <laughs> in the world <laughs> you know what I mean um no but we're good everyone is good you know it's obviously it's a hard 
time um, for us and uh, with everything we have going on. And in that, there's so much support and connection between our our family and our um, my stepmom and my little sisters. And like, it's just there's, you know, I think if I'm counting correctly, there's seven uh, or eight like strong female personalities that make up our little tribe, sure. you know, and it, he's just he's the only the only male in that. And um, it's really interesting to see all like the different generations of it um, all together. Yeah. So it's good. And and it's really nice also to feel like I'm in a place creatively where a lot of projects that I've been working on that felt very amorphous, like, you know, when you're working on something and you get really excited and you have a meeting and someone's like, I love this. I, this is, this is great. This is genius. And then you never hear from that person or, you know, I don't know how long this took to get off the ground. I've had a lot of those meetings. You've had yeah. a lot of those meetings, right? <laughs> Where you're like, I am so, I'm so hyped on this. And I get so enthusiastic. Like I get so hyped with like, this is a great idea. We're seeing it. We're meshing. And then so many of those things would just kind of fall through. And now like around 30, around, you know, the new year last year, like things really started to create some traction. So I have some like cool like writing stuff and producing stuff, like all these different categories that I had never really been sunk my teeth into. Oh. So, yeah. That's so exciting. I'm killing right. it. I feel I'm like happier than I've ever been. I'm super in love, super happy. How'd you meet him? Hinge. Hinge love. Hinge. Love, love hinge. hinge. Oh, friend of show. Yeah. I, I really want to be do you sponsored. Have a, do you have a, we are. Do you have a hinge <laughs> success story? Um, literally, <laughs> love of my life. We're gonna get married, met on hinge. Oh. We met over the holidays and it was like immediate and I was flying back from Sun Valley and he was like, I'll pick you up from the airport. And I was like, all right, I'm meeting a stranger, whatever. Like we'd FaceTime just at times, but he, I landed at LAX and he was, you know, at the baggage claim and we walked up and just started smooching at the airport and he came over that night and slept over and then has never left. What was the prompt that got you? I super liked him. And then he had a photo with like the tint of like a like neon yellow, like chartreuse. And I was like, that's my favorite color. And then he responded and was like, I wore it just for you. Oh. And I was like, mm, okay. <laughs> Can we, you want a hinge sponsorship? I honestly am hinge. like, hinge. If you're listening. If you're listening, I can't, I, th I thank you every day at my house. I go, thank you, Hinge, yeah. for this joy. So, there you go. Success story <laughs> it right <works>. here. It works. <laughs> I love that for you. That's amazing. Yeah. It's, that is so great. It's He's from Buffalo. From Buffalo. He's is, from, uh, is Scout still dating the same wonderful man I met eight years ago? Um, They just broke up. Oh, fuck. Um, no, she, she's single. Um, Mangalin. Um, I remember it's... She's mom energy. She's doing it. Uh, but no, they they broke up. But it's good. It's like okay, it's fine. everyone's good. Okay. Everyone's, everyone's good. Great. Everyone's great. It's so nice to be with someone who isn't like LA tainted. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I do, literally. Like yeah. it's like you've I've grew up here. I've never left. So everyone I'm like very jaded. I'm like, oh, everyone is, you know, and I don't go out. I'm not sober. I don't like go to bars or anything so it was really hinge or like complete loneliness the rest of my life <laughs> those were the two options that is an ad <laughs> that is an ad uh any other final thoughts before we let uh, Tallulah go and we say goodbye no i yep. think that was perfect. this has been yeah. so much fun so much fun i am like so back? i would love to come back yeah, we just I'm going to be so much more educated by the time I come back. I'm going to know everyone's name. You did a great job. I did? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank Absolutely. you. We're just Thank having non-serious conversations about non-serious shows. <laughs> minus the P. Diddy. Yeah. Stuff. Minus yeah. That yeah. Then, 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 then <laughs> something yeah. we all got very quiet and like held our voices. Yeah. Like it was like, we don't make quips Well, right we now. all kind of grew up listening to the guy or following his career. Yep. And, yeah. and, and Making and the band. Making the band mm -hmm. and all that shit. So like, it's just, you know, it's... Got to get that right. Thanks to Elizabeth Wagmeister again for coming on and uh, and just walking us through that entire case. Because uh, like Elizabeth said, it sounds like there's much more to come. We will be following it very closely. Yeah, again, that whole R. Kelly of it all is that that's what blows my mind. And again, there's a lot of connections between P. Diddy and other artists, yeah. especially. Like, and it's kind of like, you know, just because your friend is up to no good doesn't mean you necessarily were. But again, our, everyone knew R. Kelly. Mm -hmm. 
was doing this shit. Right. Everyone. And there were some very notable artists, including mm -hmm. Sean Diddy Combs, that were publicly associating themselves with R. Kelly during Within that, that time. Within that time. Yep. So what the fuck? Right. <laughs> Literally. So that's all we'll say about that right now. <laughs> but like, I, and again, like the, look, half of Hollywood like went to his parties. Yeah. And if these alleged tapes are a thing, you know, who was having alleged sex with alleged sex workers? Who was forced to do things? Yeah. Like, was it like a, like there was the outer crust of people that were just there for a good time? And like, then holy shit, I'm at Puff Daddy's uh, yeah. party. And then there's like the inner crust of like, no, we know where the bad shit goes down. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And so maybe it's like that weird thing where it's like, well, I went to a party. Like, am I culpable? It's like, I think you'd know. You know. You know if you did some stuff that you... Should be doing. I wonder. I I wonder who Elizabeth was mentioning was deleting I know. photos. I know. I'll I'm sure someone will let us know. I mean, the... that was a wild fact too. Just knowing that uh, people did come. Oh to... shit! Gotta delete that one. <laughs> <laughs> but like people coming to anybody's defense at any time, and just no one has said anything in defense of Diddy. Like that's the that silence. is so telling. So, people, yeah. Well, they're like waiting to see probably like how much information that people have. That, that actually sometimes like when shit happens online, like or in Bachelor Nation. I remember like when shit went down with Chris Harrison, everyone was like, oh, the silence is deafening. It's just like, it's been two hours. I'm still <laughs> sleeping. I haven't been on my phone yet. Chill the fuck out. Yeah. You know, like I barely, Chris Harrison never talked to most of the cast. Like most people didn't know, hadn't had said two words to Chris Harrison. Right. Uh, a little different than The Bachelor or whatever. But yeah, like sometimes it's like, oh, speak up. It's like, holy fucking oh shit. Yeah, like I'm, I don't live on the internet, but. Uh, when weeks go by and and, and and Puff Daddy literally made your career mm -hmm. uh, and you have nothing to say, that that's interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's something for us to know. I would say so. Yeah. I would say so. <laughs> Any, oh. Anything else you want to plug? You're following? Um, uh, where do you follow Tallulah? Oh, you follow me uh, at B-U-U-S-K-I Booski on I'm Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, it's just one and done. I'm just booski. All right. Anyways, more to discuss uh, on Thursdays going deeper. We have the very sweet, very, very endearing Daisy Kent with us on going deeper. And my dear friend, Jojo Siwa is with us also to kick things off in the episode to talk about her uh, new music, which is turning heads and making waves. So uh, excited to talk with Jojo about that. That's this week on Going Deeper. And then next week. Ooh, what? It's a good one. It's so good. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. The episode has been recorded. It's done. I still don't want to tease it quite yet. Uh, all right. Well, until then, don't forget to send in your questions at asknickofthevalfiles.com for all things Ask Nick. Don't forget to check out this week's episode of Ask Nick. Uh, something about uh, their roommates won't close the door because while they're having sex. <laughs> Uh, that and a lot more just messiness. If you love hearing other people's problems, check out Ask Nick. And if you like getting some sage advice from yours truly, also check it out. Uh, either way, it's an entertaining show. We'll see you on Thursday. Bye. Hey guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.